Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If Deku Got Harim with Spider Quirk. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Zedruf13 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Speech thoughts, mental communication, all might buff talking AM thoughts. Deep in downtown Tokyo inside a dimly lit bar that was never open to anyone, two strange individuals stood. In front of them sat twenty or more test tubes filled with a strange black glowing substance that bubbled every so often. These two individuals were Tamira Shigaraki, a man who had hands covering his body and face, and Kurajiri, better known as Black Mist. Both men were villains that were a part of the League of Villains and they were currently in the middle of creating their masterpiece that would finally stop the symbol of peace. Finally, we're drawing near to the end of All Might thanks to this beautiful thing right here, Shigaraki said in a creepy voice with a smile as he held up one of the test tubes. Pardon me for asking, but what do those do? You never actually stated what these are, only that they help this Naomu. Kirajiri asked, trying not to annoy the other man as it was never pretty when Shigaraki was angry. Shigaraki only snickered as he turned to Kirajiri. For once, I'm actually glad you asked. This here is our power-up for the final boss that is All Might. It's the combination of a super-strength quirk, a high-stamina quirk, a super-effective regenerative quirk and a quirk that naturally hardens the bones so large objects heavier than the user don't snap the body in half. I call it the Namu Serum. Kirajiri looked shocked at him. And you have more than twenty of these. We could make a small army out of these. Shigaraki merely shook his head, as if it would be that easy. Any human that consumes this formula dies after one week due to the pure power of the combined quirks. These formulas are all being used on one creature, an artificial body that was made for these quirks, a creature made of an organic substance we were lucky to find a couple of months back. Kurajiri nodded in understanding but then asked one more question. What if this was used on an animal or insect? Shigaraki thought for a second before looking down at the floor to see a spider. Only one way to find out. Shigaraki let three drops of the Namu Serum fall onto the spider and almost instantly the spider freaked out, shaking violently before turning over with its legs curled up, effectively dying. That happens. Both villains left the room so they didn't see the supposedly dead spider turn itself over and go through a crack in the wall, leaving the building. A few days later. It's not wrong to dream. But you need to dream realistically, kid. Izuku Medoria, a 14-year-old, third-year middle school student who was born with no quirk in this world of weird, had just been told he can't be a hero by the very person he looked up to, All Might. Well, a deflated All Might. Izuku had just been emotionally destroyed. He thought that if he at least heard something inspirational from All Might then he could finally push himself to be a hero. But instead he got told the opposite and all he could think about was every demoralizing thing he'd ever been told. You should just give up. What can you even do? You're totally useless. I'm sorry, Izuku. I'm sorry. Izuku felt so sad and zoned out. He didn't even notice the spider crawling up his trousers and onto his black school jacket. What did grab his attention, however, was the massive explosion that happened several streets away from him. Izuku's eyes even lit up a little bit. I wonder what hero will show up. Izuku said to himself with wonder in his voice. He was about to run for the exit to go and investigate the explosion for himself but was stopped by a massive piercing and burning pain hitting the back of his neck. Izuku winced in pain and said to himself with a sad smile, guess that's what I get for being optimistic. And with that, he continued to go towards the exit of the roof of the building, walking slowly with a sad look on his face while he thought to himself. Even the best of the best said it. Izuku raised his left hand up and rubbed his nose and eyes. Don't cry. You already knew, this is reality. It's because I knew, that I tried so damn hard to ignore the reality of it all. Izuku continued to walk while fighting back tears when he was hit by a massive amount of dizziness, causing him to stumble and rest against a wall to stay standing up. Where did they come from all of a sudden? Izuku then turned to his right and saw a group of people surrounding the entrance to a shopping district that was currently on fire. I guess I just walked here subconsciously. Izuku regained his balance and made his way to the crowd to see what was happening. To Izuku's surprise, he saw the dark green sludge villain that almost killed him earlier. Why is he here? I thought All Might captured him. The realization hit him as he thought back to earlier when he and All Might had a struggle midair. Izuku covered his mouth with his hands and went wide-eyed in shock. This is my fault. Why aren't the heroes doing anything? One of the watchers asked. Apparently the villain grabbed a middle schooler. Izuku felt sick. Someone else is enduring that same pain. He felt so guilty. It was because he wanted to ask questions. It was because. It's completely my fault. It's my fault All Might can't do anything. Izuku merely prayed that the hostage would be able to hold out until a hero with the right quirk came along. But then he saw the eyes. The eyes that belonged to Katsuki Bakugu, to Kakan. The eyes that were filled with complete fear of death. In less than a second, Izuku went from the back of the crowd watching the scene playing out to dashing towards Bakugu as fast as his legs could carry him. Everyone was shocked at what Izuku was doing, including Izuku himself. Get back here you fool. Stop. The hero's strong arms yelled out to Izuku which he ignored completely. 
What am I doing? Why am I running? The villain laughed and started to move his body, preparing to strike. Izuku felt a massive sting in the back of his brain and jumped on instinct, dodging a fast swinging sludge arm. How did I do that? Izuku wondered as he landed back on the ground. Remembering page 25 of his notes, he threw his school bag at the sludge villain, temporarily blinding it. Izuku started clawing at the sludge surrounding Bakugou even though he knew it was pointless to do so. Bakugou gave Izuku a confused look as he shouted with tears nearly coming out of his eyes. My legs just starting moved on their own. And, you looked like you were asking for help. That one line hit all my heart, he had been lecturing this kid about how he couldn't be a hero and here he was risking his life while All Might just sat on the sidelines doing nothing, only thinking about himself. In his self-directed anger and disappointment, he slowly forced himself to transform. Pathetic. Pathetic. Just as the sludge villain was about to take another swing at Izuku, All Might appeared in front of him in the blink of the eye and stopped the attack with his whole body. I really am pathetic. He didn't sound big and proud like he always did but instead he sounded annoyed at himself. Even when I admonished you, I wasn't putting what I said into practice. All Might shouted, gripping Izuku's and Bakugou's arms with his massive left hand. With blood shooting out of his mouth, All Might yelled, a pro should always be ready to risk his life. He punched the air in front of the sludge villain with a mighty force as he shouted at the top of his lungs. Detroit S-M-A-A-A-S-H. The villain scattered into pieces from the sheer force of the punch, a punch which also created a powerful wind tornado that made all the clouds swirl around in the sky and slowly let down droplets of rain that progressively got heavier. He changed the weather with the air pressure of a single punch. One of the civilians in the crowd shouted in amazement. The rest of the crowd began shouting in joy that All Might defeated the villain with ease. After the whole sludge villain fiasco, All Might dealt with the many, many questions from the press while all the other heroes helped collect the scattered pieces of sludge for the police. Izuku had to deal with the shouting of heroes such as Strong Arms and Kamui Woods who kept telling him what he did was suicidal. He also had a few paramedics ask if he was alright because of how unnaturally pale he was. On the other hand, Bakugou was getting praised by the heroes saying he was so brave and his quirk was amazing. It's amazing how differently you're treated because of quirks. It's been about five minutes since the villain had been defeated and Izuku was on his way home to finally get some rest. I wanted to apologize to All Might but the reporters didn't make it easy. Plus, I'm not feeling so good right now, Izuku thought to himself as he put a hand to his head when he started to feel dizzy again. Hey, Deku. Izuku turned at the sound of his nickname from Bakugou and thought he'd say thanks or something along the lines of that. Instead, he was met with a very angry Bakugou that looked like he wanted to murder Izuku. I never asked for your help. And as if you could. You did nothing. You're a fucking quirkless failure. How dare you pity me, you fucking nerd. Bakugou yelled before storming off. Izuku felt even worse now because he knew Bakugou was right. He couldn't do a single thing to help the situation. I guess I should really focus on a realistic future and stay. I am here. All Might suddenly rushed out onto the street and appeared dramatically in front of Izuku, as he always does, shocking Izuku and making him nearly jump out of his skin. All Might, why are you here? I thought you were surrounded by reporters. All Might merely laughed loudly and stated, shaking them off is nothing to me. After all I am all in my cuff. All Might was cut off by a stream of blood shooting out of his mouth and deflating down to his true form. Izuku screamed a little but All Might regained his composure and calmly spoke to Izuku. Kid, I've come to thank you, apologize and I have a proposal. Izuku looked confused but said nothing. If I hadn't heard your story, I'd have been nothing but fake muscles and fake sincerity, and for that, I thank you. Izuku felt a little better but still looked down in sadness. No, it was my fault from the start. I got in the way and even though I'm a quirkless failure. You're wrong. All Might shouted, cutting Izuku off. Of all the people there, it was only you, a timid and quirkless kid, who acted. Most of the top heroes show signs of greatness even as children. Many of them claim that. Izuku mentally pieced together what All Might was saying and slowly broke down. Please don't say it. I don't deserve to hear it. Please. Their bodies moved before they could think. Please don't. That's what happened to you, yes. Yes. Izuku unconsciously answered All Might's question despite being a complete mess on the inside. All Might smiled and said, with no hesitation, the two lines that would change Izuku's life forever. Kid, I believe you can become a hero, and that you are worthy to inherit my power. Huh. Speech thoughts. Mental communication. All Might buff talking AM thoughts. Huh. All Might burst out laughing when he saw Izuku's confused face. A-H-A-H-A-H-A. What's that face for? All Might then pointed at Izuku as blood shot out of his mouth. I'm asking you, if you want to try accepting my power. Izuku looked confused and thought this whole thing was a dream. You really doubt me that much. Izuku panicked and tried to deny it, saying that he actually believed him but he was cut off by All Might. I have many secrets but I never lie. All Might then held out his left hand and let his palm glow slightly as he continued. I have the ability to transfer my power. That's the quirk I inherited. It's called one for all. Izuku was shocked. He'd never heard of a quirk that could be transferred from one person to another and why was it being offered to him of all people? B but, why me? All Might smiled at Izuku and pointed at him as well. I've been searching for a successor for a long while now. 
and back there, you were more heroic than anyone else. That is why I believe you are a worthy successor. All Might made a loud cough sound and spurted out more blood. Of course, this depends on your answer. Izuku didn't know what to say. He'd just been told All Might's greatest secret and been offered his power because he was seen as worthy. His head was spinning from all this. Do I have a reason not to accept this? No. Izuku rubbed his eyes with his school jacket sleeve and looked up at All Might with complete seriousness. Yes, I accept Izuku was cut off by himself suddenly passing out and falling face first into the ground. Hey kid, you all right? All Might shouted as he rushed to Izuku's side, shaking him a little. A few hours later, Izuku awoke to see the ceiling of his own room. Uug, I feel like shit. Wait, was that all a dream? Figures. Izuku put his hand to his mouth and ran to the bathroom where he felt like he threw up his guts into the toilet. After Izuku vomited, he washed his mouth out and turned around to see his mother, Inko Midoriya, standing there. With a slight look of relief, she ran up and hugged Izuku. I'm so happy you're okay. When that blonde skeleton-looking man showed up with you passed out I was so worried and... Izuku went wide-eyed as he realized All Might saying he could be a hero wasn't a dream at all. Izuku, did you hear me? Izuku looked at his mom and smiled. I'm sorry, I zoned out there. Inko held out a small piece of paper that was folded and had for only Izuku to read written on it. He wanted me to give you this. Izuku took the letter and headed to his room. Do you need anything, sweetie? Food. Water. Izuku stopped and smiled back at his mother. I'm fine, mom, I just need some sleep. Inko smiled worriedly back at her son. Okay, just let me know if you need anything. Izuku entered his room, closing the door behind him, and opened his letter, reading it mentally in All Might's voice. Hey kid, you really had me worried there when you passed out on me. I had to look through your bag to find your address so I could make sure you were safe at home. Make sure you get rest tonight as your training starts tomorrow 10 a.m. at Takoba Municipal Beach and it won't be easy. Izuku set his alarm for 8 a.m. and took off his clothes so he was only in his underwear and walked towards his bed, but he stopped when he walked past his mirror. Izuku turned slightly so his back was visible to him. On his neck was what seemed to be a deep spider bite that had a string of web leading out of it. At the end of it was a dead, shriveled up spider which swung from side to side like a pendulum. Izuku looked at it in shock before pulling the surprisingly strong web out of the bite in a hurry and putting it in the bin. Hopefully that thing wasn't poisonous. And why did it look like it had all the blood drained out of it? Was the last thing Izuku thought to himself as he jumped into bed and drifted into sleep. The next morning, as Izuku slowly stirred from his deep and restful sleep, he was surprised by his alarm clock that made him jump in shock as the clock seemed louder than usual and further away. And below him, wait, what? Izuku looked at what he thought was up and saw that he was centimeters away from the ceiling, being held up by his fingertips and toes. He had literally jumped onto the ceiling. What the hell? Izuku said to himself as he dropped from the ceiling onto his bed with a soft thud. Izuku jumped out of bed and rushed to his mirror. In it, he saw that he wasn't the same wimpy-looking Deku from before, now he was muscular as hell. He must have actually thrown up his guts last night because he had no fat on his body, and, instead, he was half a head taller and covered in sleek muscles that made it look like he'd been body training for years. The thing that looked more out of place to Izuku than the muscles was the little, almost tube-like things coming out of his wrists. As if he knew what to do, he pushed his right middle finger and right ring finger into his palm for less than a second and on Izuku's mirror, a small splatter of webbing appeared. What the fuck was that spider? Just as Izuku said that, his mother entered, doing her usual routine of collecting his washing from the day before. Morning Izuku. Breakfast is on the tea and Ko dropped the clothes she was holding and stared at her son in shock. Izuku, what happened to you? Izuku waved his hands in front of his face. I honestly don't know, mom, I swear. I just woke up like this. I don't know what happened, honest. Both Izuku and Inko were confused as to what had actually happened to Izuku overnight. Inko was the first one to break the tension. Well, your breakfast is on the table and I'll see if I can find some of your father's old clothes as you seem to be about his height now. Izuku scratched the back of his head nervously and sat on his bed waiting for some clothes while he figured out what exactly had happened to him and what powers he actually gained. 10 a.m. the same morning. All Might sat on a fridge in his normal form, waiting for Izuku to turn up to his first day of intense training. All Might heard fast footsteps not too far away from where he was sitting and when he saw a mop of black and green curly hair, he knew it was Izuku. Midoriya my boy, you finally showed up for your training. All Might had buffed up and jumped down to meet Izuku but was met with a completely different looking Izuku wearing a not so baggy white t-shirt and gray sweatpants. Midoriya, I swear you weren't this tall yesterday. All Might laughed as he patted Izuku's head. I don't know what happened to me but I've gotten stronger, faster and more flexible somehow, I think I might have gotten a quirk. All Might smiled at Izuku and patted him on the back as he began to laugh. Well, that makes giving you my power much easier as you'll probably be able to handle the power now. Izuku just shook his head and looked at All Might with complete seriousness. It was the same look in his eye that he had when he was about to accept All Might's power. No, I want to master this quirk before I start using one for all. All Might laughed up at the sky with his hands on his hips and then pointed at Izuku's chest. And show me what you can do. Izuku smiled and looked at a broken truck 20 meters away from him. 
He fired two web lines out of his wrists that attached to the truck and held them tightly in his hands. That's certainly new, a now deflated All Might stated. Izuku ran at full sprint, which was incredibly fast, it was probably as fast as All Might at about 4%. He then jumped several meters in the air and did a forward flip so he was holding his webbing above his head. As he went over the truck, he pulled as hard as he could on his webs, lifting the truck into the air. When Izuku landed, he pulled his webbing to the ground and had the truck fly over him and slam into the ground with a colossal amount of force. Izuku turned around to look at All Might with a tired but smiling face. Kid, you exceeded my expectations ten times over. And with that one showcase of power, the training of Izuku Midoriya's spider powers begun. Time six months later, Achako Yuraka was an incredibly cheery girl who always saw the good in everything. When she got moved closer to Yue early because her parents convinced her to get to know her surroundings, her first plan was to view the beach in her now local area so she could maybe get a tan. However, that went to hell when she got told the state of the beach by one of the neighbors. She had nothing to do, though, so she went anyway. When Yuraka actually arrived at Takoba Municipal Beach, it was nothing like the neighbors had described because there was barely any trash to be seen on the beach. Yuraka rested against a metal railing as she admired the beautiful scenery of the sun reflecting on the sea. Her admiring of the scenery was cut short, however, when she saw a black and green-haired boy in a sky-blue tracksuit run across carrying a large freezer above his head as if it was nothing. Running behind him was a blonde skinny man who was struggling to keep up but shouting encouraging stuff to him as he ran. Yuraka chuckled a little as she watched the two run past but she lost her smile when the railing broke causing her to fall forward and straight towards a pile of sharp trash. I can't use my quirk in time, was the only thing she could think to herself as she screamed and squeezed her eyes shut, preparing for the worst, which never came. Hey you all right? A soft and concerned voice spoke as Yuraka opened her eyes to see that it was the same green-haired boy that ran by earlier. How did he move so fast? Yuraka then noticed that he was carrying her in a bridal position and gained a small blush which Izuku noticed. Oh, sorry. Izuku panicked slightly as he let Yuraka down onto her feet. Thank you so much. Yuraka bowed as she thanked Izuku. Aye, it's fine why you don't have to bow. Izuku stuttered out as he slowly started hiding himself with his arms. He just now realized he was talking to a girl properly for the first time. But how did you move so fast you were way over there when I last looked? Yuraka asked as she pointed in the direction of where Izuku was running. Izuku looked away and scratched his head nervously. And my quirk increases my reaction time along with speed so it was nothing really. Yuraka just looked at Izuku in shock. Just who are you? Izuku moved his arms to look at her but an out of breath All Might walked to the two teens and talked for him. His name, Pant, is Izuku Midoriya Pant but he has the nickname Deku. Izuku faced All Might and explained what that nickname actually meant. That nickname is meant to be an insult from Kakan. All Might went wide-eyed and apologized to Izuku but Yuraka spoke up. But I kinda like Eskata you can do it ring to it, plus it sounds kinda cute. Izuku's whole face went red as a tomato. Deku's fine. All Might just sweat dropped as he thought to himself, didn't he just say it was an insult? Yuraka giggled a little at how embarrassed Izuku was. I'm Achako Yuraka and thanks for saving me. Hope we meet again. To Izuku's surprise, Yuraka hugged him and then ran off with a big smile on her face. Izuku on the other hand just turned into a blushing mess with steam coming off his head as he muttered that was the first time a girl talked and hugged him. All Might on the other hand just face palmed at the sight of his successor. He's gifted with incredible power yet he can't handle talking to a girl. His future is going to be interesting for sure. Speech thoughts. Mental communication. All Might buff talking AM thoughts. Recap, Izuku Midori a quirkless fanboy accepted the opportunity to inherit All Might's quirk but before he started his training to handle the sheer power of the quirk he gained spider-like powers as well as super strength and speed. While in the midst of his training to improve his powers more so he saved a girl that went by the name of Achako Yuraka who is now amazed by Izuku's sheer coolness dot 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 even though he became a shy embarrassed shortly after they started talking. And here we are now with Izuku later that day. As a spider spun its web in the corner of Izuku Midoriya's room he watched it fascination and pure concentration with a notepad in his hands writing every little detail he thought was necessary about the spider's movement. He also alternated so that he wrote information about his new powers into a notepad that based solely on him, costume, moves and powers mainly. Powers wise I only have a few powers that represent a spider but as it currently stands, incredibly grip hairs on my hands and feet allowing me to crawl on near all surfaces, other uses of this have yet to be tested. Side note, my feet can't stick to surfaces when wearing thick soled shoes, custom shoes, boots are in design process. Spider sense, temporary name that gives me a nerve jolt that warns me of any attacks aimed at me, other uses yet to be discovered. Web shoot, organic yet incredibly strong webbing that shoots from an approximately 3mm wide bone tube that protrudes from both wrists. 
that are triggered by what seem to be palm pressure points. The longer these are presses on the longer the web, combat-worthy moves regarding the webbing are in progress. Side note, webbing is still very spread out and splatter-like. Web filters and enhancements are also still in design stages. Web zip. Previously mentioned webbing used to be shot at an object or surface then pulled by me so a large amount of distance is covered in a matter of seconds. Izuku tapped the bottom of his pencil against his chin as he thought to himself about the other limits of his quirk that weren't spider-related but still obviously useful, and continued to mutter to himself as he wrote them down. Other powers included enhanced strength which allows me to carry one ton above my head for approximately ten minutes, two tons for five minutes if I push myself. Enhanced reflexes making my reactions to my surroundings five times faster than they were before, these are not completely confirmed. Enhanced physical speed making my body able to react my new reflexes and also makes it so sprints and quick succession punches can be pulled off with ease. Stamina has been increased to support these physical changes. A very big change that has been noted is that I am now a lot more flexible than before and I am able to pull off advanced gymnastic moves with ease and maneuverability is much faster than before. Izuku set his notepad and pencil to the side and stretched his hand out to ease the cramp in his hand and continued to do so as he lied back on his bed still looking at the spider's movements. Izuku had started observing spiders alongside his training for about two months now. Studying one spider's movements and repeating this process whenever a new one entered his room, the one he was currently observing was the most web-based spider so far. As the spider crawled across its web it held onto a stray stand of web attached to the ceiling. Izuku sat up in interest as he watched the spider swing across from one wall to another with complete ease. Izuku quickly grabbed his notepad and wrote down one last note with a question mark next to it before setting it back down and going to sleep. Web swinging. The next morning Izuku changed into a casual outfit consisting of a black hoodie and dark gray baggy cargo pants with his iconic red sneakers so that he was comfy while he did his training. Mom I'm heading into the city center today for some training, I should be back by 5. Izuku shouted out as he packed his notepad and some other bits and pieces into his backpack before heading into the kitchen where a little bento box was set on the kitchen side table. I had a feeling you'd be out for training when I heard all that mumbling coming from your room last night Izuku laughed nervously as he put the bento box in his bag walked to the door waving back at his mom. Don't do anything stupid Izuku froze on the spot but continued to walk out after a second passed and he thought to himself. I can't promise that. Elsewhere at Tacoba Municipal Beach a deflated All Might was carrying small bits of trash and putting them into the back of a pickup truck. That kid's been working hard to inherit one for all, I think I'll help him out a little on his day off All Might thought to himself as he threw a microwave into the back of the truck before giving out a small grunt and holding his back in pain. Shit my back. I don't know how the kid does it for hours on end All Might turned around to see Uraka looking around on the beach as if she was searching for someone. Hey aren't you the girl from yesterday? All Might asked as he walked over to her. Uraka's face brightened when she saw, the unknown to her, All Might and smiled at him before asking. Your Deku-kun's trainer right. Do you know where he is? I thought he'd be training here All Might gave a breath of relief that she didn't ask what his name. It'd be a bit awkward if some random girl knew what his real name was even when Izuku doesn't know. He's got the day off form training but you seem like a nice enough girl though so I'll give you his address All Might pulled out some paper from his back pocket and a pen from his left side pocket and scribbled down Izuku's address which, remembered from when he had to carry the poor boy home when he passed out the same day he met him. Uraka's face lit up in excitement as she took the paper and ran off to find Izuku but looked back at All Might shouting. Thank you Deku-kun's trainer. Achoo, what was that about? Izuku thought to himself as he scratched his nose and wandered around the city center where he was surrounded by what seemed to be a forest of skyscrapers and high rises some of which were under construction. Izuku looked towards a high-class apartment building that was tall but definitely smaller than the other buildings around it and it conveniently had a crane near it. Hopefully that will do for these tests Izuku thought as he neared the apartment complex but stopped when he saw the doorman blocking the front entrance. I guess I'm taking the back route then Izuku made his way to the back of the apartment building so that he was now in an alley and no one could see him. Izuku lifted his left foot up and shot some webbing onto the sole of his shoe and the tip of his shoe then repeated this process for his right foot. In one swift jump Izuku went from on the ground to 5 meters up the wall being held up by his fingertips and the tips of his shoes. Okay just like practice. Left, right, left, right. Izuku followed his words by moving his arms and legs with what he said until he got a steady rhythm going where he could climb without complete concentration on his climbing. Back at Izuku's home his mother and co was slightly shocked to be met with several soft knocks on her door as she thought Izuku wouldn't be back for several hours from now. When Inko opened the door she was met with Yuraka who had a beaming smile on her face. Hello, can I help you? Inko greeted welcomingly with a smile. Erm, um, hi, I was wondering if Deku-kun lives here Yuraka replied back with what seemed to be a sound of nervousness in her voice. Deku, oh you mean Izuku, I'm sorry to say but he isn't here right now he's off in the city trying out something new with his quirk Yuraka held in her annoyance as she thought to herself. I walk all the way over here now I've gotta walk into the city just to talk to him. 
Izuku felt his nose twitch as he got to the very top of the apartment building wall and threw himself upwards and forwards so that he could pull off a little forward flip before landing on both feet with ease. That's still so cool to do Izuku said to himself as he grinned like an idiot before walking to the left side of the roof where a crane arm was visibly in range for Izuku to shoot webbing at. He took out his notepad and wrote the following as he spoke it out loud. Attempt 1. One simple swing out and back in to see if the webbing can support my body weight for an slightly extended period of time Izuku rested his notepad and bag on the small wall that was on the very edge of the roof and took out a pair of sunglasses in his pocket and put them on along with putting his hood up hiding most of his face and hair. I don't want to worry mom by showing my face while swinging around the city with the possibility of death he stepped towards the edge and pulled back his sleeves a little so that he wouldn't have any interference from his clothing when firing a web line. Izuku aimed with his right arm at the crane's arm and pushed into his palm with only his middle finger and right ring finger and held them there until a clear line of webbing shot out from his wrist and hit onto the crane. Izuku quickly stopped pushing down onto his palm which stopped and disconnected the webbing from his wrist and held onto it with both hands and started trembling. This is a lot higher than I'd thought it would be making the mistake of looking down and was hit by a wave of fear making him tremble and shake. Izuku took several deep breaths and closed his eyes. Okay okay. Point one. Point two. Point three. On three Izuku jumped off the edge and started screaming at the top of his lungs in fear as he held his arms out in front and started to swing forwards. The second Izuku felt himself slowing down as he swung he opened his eyes and tried his best to turn around and succeeded mostly as he was now facing the apartment building but didn't have the momentum to make it back to the roof. Izuku went into a panic fearing that he was going to be stuck on the crane and get into trouble but with some split zero second thinking that he knew would be stupid. He let go of the web line at just the right moment so he went upwards into the air and with his left arm aimed at the roof shot a web line straight onto it and Webb rushed back onto the roof and landed with a roll but lied down on his back immediately after clutching his chest feeling his heartbeat which was beating at an insane pace. Pant. Attempt. Pant. 1. Success Izuku caught his breath then grinned like an idiot up at the sky before punching his fist up in the air and stating. This is the kind of rush I need to push me forward. Hours passed as Izuku practiced web swinging to the point where the heights didn't bother him that much. Alright, attempt 38. Swing from building to building and test different moves in midair to see if they change speed. Izuku finished writing down what he had just said and set his notepad down then took several steps back ready for a run up. With a burst of speed Izuku ran towards the edge of the roof and leapt off throwing his arms in front so he got more distance out of the jump and was ready to fire a web line straight at the crane which he did with only his right arm but held on to the web with both hands above his head and let his body relax so that his momentum stayed the same as he swung with incredible speed and letting go at just the right moment sending Izuku flying upwards feet first. As he traveled upwards through the air Izuku did a small backflip in the air so that his arms were now behind him as he dived down head first but it didn't last long as he fired another web line from his right wrist onto the roof of a building high above him to Izuku's right. Izuku only let himself swing right a little bit before pulling the web below him so that his entire body was above the web itself gaining higher ground and then immediately shot to his left so that he wasn't traveling one-sided to the right. Izuku repeated this process in no particular order and occasionally shouted woohoo with every big swing he did. After about 10 minutes of non-stop swinging Izuku made his way back to the apartment complex 0 a and D landed on the roof in a crouching position and looked at the edge of the roof, but didn't see his notepad by his bag. Wow the research you've done on your own quirk is outstanding. Izuku turned round in an instant and aimed his right wrist in the direction of where he heard the voice but was surprised to see a somewhat tall girl with black hair and a spiky ponytail and side fringe standing there reading his notes in a thick jumper and shorts. I'm sorry I shouldn't have startled you like that the girl threw her hands in the air still holding Izuku's notepad. Izuku got out of his crouched stance and lowered his arm down as he became embarrassed that he was talking to a girl he's never met for the second day in a row. And no it's my fault for being so jumpy, W what are you doing up here anyway? The black haired girl laughed a little before stating. Well when you see someone swinging around your apartment building for more than two hours you tend to get a little curious Izuku looked away a little and tried to hide himself in embarrassment even though he was still wearing his hood and sunglasses, effectively hiding his identity from the girl. Who are you anyway? With a quirk like yours you would be pretty popular even if you're pretty young Izuku just removed his hood and moved his sunglasses onto his forehead. As he stuttered out his name. I am Izuku M.M. Midoriya, see can I please have my notes back Izuku's face immediately went to one of shock as mentally regretted what he just said. I was meant to say nice to meet you not that. Why am I such a mess? A loud laugh came from the black haired girl as she walked over to Izuku. You know when I first saw you land and act so hostile, I thought you were gonna be all serious and edgy but instead you're funny and very smart judging from your notes. And you're actually kinda cute she obviously thought that last part in her head with a small blush across her face. I'm Momo Yeirazu by the way but you can call me Momo-chan Momo handed Izuku his notepad back and he just smiled as he took it trying not to break down like he did yesterday with Yuraka. TT thanks MM Momo-chan Izuku stepped back and put his notepad back in his bag. Can I make a suggestion about your costume design? 
Momo asked as Izuku headed to the edge of the roof trying to leave the awkwardness in the convocation. As sure Momo smiled and lifted up Izuku's arm and pointed to a point just above his elbow and just above the halfway point of his ribcage. You should add something to underneath your arms, about here, so you can glide for a short period of time before swinging again Izuku thought about it for a second before moving his arm back down and replying. W wouldn't it have to be made of a stretchy material so that it doesn't flap about when I'm not using it to guide Momo started to get a little excited that she could finally talk to someone about a smart topic for once. But both her and Izuku's attention were caught by a loud high-pitched scream that came from about a block away. Well, while Momo couldn't even finish her sentences in an instant Izuku brought his sunglasses over his face and put his hood up before jumping off the roof and web swinging towards the scream. Midoriya kun Damn it. He forgot his bag as well slightly annoyed Momo picked up Izuku's bag and ran to the roof exit so that she could get a chance of seeing where Izuku would be swinging off to in such a hurry. Speech thoughts. Mental communication. Talking over the phone. All might buff talking AM thoughts. Recap. After meeting, saving and becoming friends with Achako Uraraka, Izuku Midoriya had been studying up on his powers and having inspiration for a new web technique called web swinging. In the process of perfecting this technique Izuku met Momo Yeyurazu a smart girl who was very interested in Izuku's notes, powers, and just Izuku in general. Momo's interaction with Izuku didn't last long though as a scream caused Izuku to swing away in a hurry. And here we are now with a slightly panicking Izuku swinging towards the direction he heard the scream. Gotta move faster. Where did that scream come from? Izuku swung himself into the air with as much momentum he could use and looked around quickly to see any sign of where the scream could have come from and found it when he saw a panicked-looking man on the phone occasionally peeking into the alley. Izuku took that as a sign that was the alley where the scream originated and swung above the alley entrance and went into a web-crawling position on the wall to the left of it before climbing around the corner and focusing his eyes to see what was happening in the shadows further down. Deep down the alley Izuku could see a man in his late twenties holding wearing mainly dark clothing and had a bandana covering half of his face as he held a gun in his right hand while his left hand was grabbing the shirt of his hostage. I can't see the hostage and I don't know the attacker's quirk or if they even have one. I'll use the shadows to sneak up and attack by Izuku's thought were cut off by his body suddenly sliding down the wall. Izuku couldn't stop himself from falling down with his webbing and relied on his instincts to do a front flip so he could land on his feet in a crouched position and making a soft thud, gaining the thug's attention. Izuku then had a quick glimpse at his feet and saw that there were only one or two little splatters of web on the sole of his shoe. Oh crap, I forgot to apply a new layer of web on my shoes before I ran off to here Izuku slowly stood up because he knew that would give him an intimidating impression to the thug, which it did. What the fuck? Heroes don't act that fast. It was clear that the thug was terrified as he shaking with fear and held the hostage in a headlock with his left arm while shakenly pointing his gun at Izuku with his right. Stay where you are. I don't know who the fuck you are but I will put a bullet through your fucking skull. Izuku thought about his options here. Negotiations are out the window, I guess fighting him. Wait, I don't even know how to fight. Okay okay, relax, I could try running at him and pulling his gun away with some web and maybe if I'm fast enough I could Izuku couldn't even finish his thoughts before his spider sense screamed at him as he heard a gunshot making him shift his whole upper body to the left dodging the bullet in less than a second. What the fuck? What are you? The thug panicked and started firing rapidly not bothering to aim making it easy to dodge bullet after bullet moving from left to right and taking small steps forward between dodging each bullet with almost perfect ease. The second Izuku heard the a click meaning that the pistol's magazine was empty he broke out into a sprint towards the thug who pushed his hostage towards Izuku and ran away as fast as he could yelling. Start up the engine. It went to shit. We need to go now. Izuku ignored the thug who went round the corner and dived to catch the hostage and let them stand up. Know that he was close enough and his eyes had adapted slightly to the darkness Izuku could finally see the hostage and saw it was actually a girl around his age with bright pink skin and hair with two white horns sticking out of her head. Izuku decided to run before he became a panicking mess for the third time in two days. Wait. Slightly startled Izuku stopped running and looked back at the girl. Just who are you? Izuku didn't show it on his face but he started mentally panicking. What do I say? I can't say my name or the police might come to my house or even worse I might have these thugs come back and hurt mom. What if? Izuku then had an epiphany and for the first time in his life raised some confidence in his voice, as well as deepening it, in front of a girl. I'm just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man and with that Izuku ran off after Thug leaping into the air and Webb swinging around the corner leaving the pink-haired girl in awe. Spider-Man, his dodging was so cool. Back at the beach All Might was just sitting calmly on some rocks looking at the beach's sunny horizon but his peace and quiet was ruined by the ringing of his phone coming from his pocket which he took out and put to his ear. Hello? To All Might's surprise he was met with a rather familiar voice. Hey, All Might been a while hasn't it? Tsukachi, I didn't expect to hear you at all. Well I phoned because of business this piqued All Might's attention. Oh, we just received a call about a mugging near the central district. 
You usually don't phone me to report muggings. What's happened to make you phone me? Approximately a minute after we got the call reporting the mugging, we got a call from the same person stating a vigilante had appeared. A vigilante fast enough to dodge bullets. That really caught All Might's completely. I'll make my way there now. All Might hung up because he knew Tsukachi was going to do the same thing regardless and turned into his buff form leaping into the air with as much strength he could muster and went flying off into the air with incredible speed towards the central district. Die you web swinging motherfucker. Said web swinger was chasing after the thug from earlier along with three other accomplices in a high speed chase through the city causing quite a commotion that the police were trailing behind Izuku at a distance where they were avoiding any gunfire. Izuku had already figured out the quirks of three of the thugs shortly after he caught up with them. Okay the driver is just a standard human with no quirk. The person sat next to him has some form of arm cannon that shoots an acidic substance up to approximately 25 meters. The backseat passenger on the left is the thug from earlier and has a marksman type quirk giving him an advantage for shooting although he clearly didn't show that earlier. And the guy on his right is the most dangerous as he's able to breathe concentrated fire like a flamethrower out of his mouth which could cause explosions because of nearby cars. Izuku found it moderately easy to dodge the bullets because he was now able to move about in the air with ease now being able to bend his body and do flips with complete ease compared to a few hours ago when Izuku struggled to do a single flip in the air. This guy isn't backing off. The marksman thug shouted to the others. Who the fuck is this guy? The diver shouted back making a hard right, Izuku following slightly closer behind now. I don't know but just shoot him down. Izuku used this chance and shot to web lines further up the road where the car was traveling and web zipped himself with enough strength to land him on the roof of the car in less than two seconds with a loud metallic thud. Izuku felt his spider sense scream at him in his mind and he responded by crossing his arms across his chest and shooting out some web from both wrists which covered the mouth of the fire breather and the barrel of the marksman's gun. Both of them tried to poke out the window as soon as Izuku landed. Before Izuku could even move to deal with the acid guy the car came to a completely abrupt stop causing Izuku to fly off the roof of the car and hit the tarmac on his back so he was just left staring up at the sky. Everyone around Izuku started cheering and applauding as more people and more people joined and giving Izuku a slight smile on his face. Did they really think I did go? Yeah. Well done all might. Thanks for saving us from those thugs all might. What? Izuku sat up holding his sunglasses on his face with his palm of his and holding the hood within between his fingers of the same hand and turned around to look at the car to see that All Might had punched the front of the car to a complete stop and thugs were being dragged out of the smashed car by the cops. Hands in the air. In complete shock Izuku looked around to see about four cops surrounding him with guns all pointing guns at his head. Izuku deepened his voice again like he did in the alley and questioned what was actually happening while he tried to stand up. What's going on? You're under arrest for acts of vigilantism. This was something Izuku didn't even consider. Becoming a vigilante, someone that everyone despises even heroes themselves hate. Maybe the public will have my C. Boo. Just turn yourself in. Fucking vigilante. Rage and betrayal. These were the only immediate emotions Izuku felt. He essentially risked his life to stop these thugs and everyone was booing and being completely against him. Well except for two people. The first person was obviously All Might because he knew Izuku's quirk was really one of a kind compared to some quirks he's seen over the years. It was obvious that All Might wanted to step in as his whole body was shaking a little bit out of anger because he knew he couldn't say anything to withhold his heroic symbol of peace stature. To Izuku's surprise the second person not hating him right now was Momo who was standing near the back of the crowd looking angry at everyone else except Izuku himself. What do I do? What do I do? I can't talk my way out of this. I need a distraction anything will do. Almost as if someone read his thoughts a shadow went over his face and he looked up to see that his bag was thrown up in the air luckily enough distracting the cops allowing Izuku to run and quickly jump away into the air. The cops wasted no time in turning their attention back to Izuku and firing their guns at him with no hesitation at all. I knew some vigilantes were hated but I didn't think it was this bad. Izuku did a quick mid-air 180 turn and shot a web line at his bag and pulled it towards him before turning back and landing on the roof on his feet and rushing to take off his hoodie and sunglasses and stuff them in his bag until he heard a loud drip that echoed in his ears and made Izuku go completely pale. Scared to look down at his own injury Izuku lifted up his t-shirt and just shot a bunch of small splattered webs across the left side of his abdomen before letting go of his shirt and with a blank expressionless face Izuku just started to walk to but stopped at the sound of a booming voice. Midoriya my boy, you have my sincerest apologies I had no idea that they would actually open fire on you and I'm sorry I could not step I all might looked up from his apologetic bow and saw the little drips of blood on the ground and the small rip stain on Izuku's shirt he deflated and ran to Izuku completely worried now. He kid you alright, say something to me. Izuku just stood there in silence not even looking at him with his lifeless looking expression but All Might couldn't utter another word before Izuku just fell forwards passing out. All Might quickly rebuffed and grabbed Izuku checking his pulse as well as other signs on him that all lead to the same conclusion. Izuku went into shock and his webbing isn't stopping the blood. Shit, what do I do? I can't take him to the hospital the police would have taken priority and looking at hospitals with recent bullet wounds and recovery girl is out of town until the entrance exam. 
Shit, shit, shit. Hold on All Might then thought back to when he dropped off Izuku after he passed out when All Might told him his secrets. Oh my god, Izuku, what happened to him? And Ko immediately ran towards the kitchen and made a weird hand motion so that the phone levitated towards her. His mother can pull small objects towards her. Yes, that can be used to take the bullet out All Might squatted down and leaped with tremendous strength towards Izuku's house. Speech thoughts, mental communication, over the phone, TV. Buff All Might speech buff All Might thoughts. Recap, reality is one of the harshest slaps to the face you can get. Izuku felt the slap of reality after he saved a girl from a mugger and attempted to stop the same mugger and his accomplices only for All Might to stop them instead and Izuku to realize that he was now pinned as a vigilante and hated by the public and the police. Unfortunately it didn't stop there for Izuku as he got shot in the left side of his abdomen and passed out from shock making All Might rush towards Izuku's house hoping to find a way to deal with the bullet. Back at the Midoriya household Yuraka was sitting on their couch watching the TV while Inko worked in the kitchen humming a little tune to herself while she walked out to the living room holding a tray and eventually handing a cup to Yuraka. Here's your tea sweetie Yuraka turned around and gave a bright smile. Thank you Mrs. Midoriya and thank you again for letting me stay here until Deku-kun gets back. Oh it's no problem dear, I wouldn't want a sweet girl like yourself to wonder aimlessly if you could just wait for him to come to a place you know he'll be. The conversation drifted away as the TV caught both of their attention. Breaking news, earlier today a high-speed pursuit went haywire when four common thugs attempted mass muggings across the higher-class district of the city. These thugs were put to a stop by none other than All Might himself. According to eyewitnesses and several police officers, a vigilante appeared around the same time of these thugs and was cornered by the police and while they say that they merely wanted to question and state a warning to the vigilante they still flipped when they had the chance leading one officer to shoot them. We have no word from the officer who shot the vigilante. I didn't think vigilantes were still a thing and co-started the conversation back up only to be met with a confused Yuraka. Wait, what are vigilantes? And co smiled at Yuraka's innocence and began to explain. Well, to put it simply they, Mrs. Midoriya, we have an emergency. All Might suddenly burst through the front door in his deflated form out of breath breaking the lock on said door and rushed into the living room holding an unconscious Izuku in his arms. The room was filled with only pure silence for approximately three seconds with Inko and Yuraka wide-eyed in shock and horror then a loud crash of Inko dropping the tray she was holding. Izuku, Inko ignored the mess she dropped on her floor and ran over to All Might while Yuraka set her tea aside and quickly moved off the couch but All Might took the opportunity dashed past them and rested Izuku on the couch and pulled up his shirt to show most of the webbing had been stained red with his blood. Shit, what happened to him? And Ko rushed to her son's side and was almost brought to tears at sight of him being covered in blood-stained clothes while Yuraka could only stand a few steps back hands over her mouth staring at Izuku as if he was at death's door. I'll explain later. You there, get some bandages while we deal with the bleeding. All Might boomed out pointing at Yuraka setting her out of her out of her days and making head to the kitchen searching although she had no clue where the bandages were, I mean this wasn't even her house. Mrs. Midori I need your help right now and Ko didn't even let All Might finish. Why my help? Take my son to a hospital. All Might cringed and started to doubt whether or not he should say why he can't take Izuku to the hospital. My apologies but I can't. Now Mrs. Midori I need you to use your quirk to get the bullet out of your son's wound again for the second time in a row All Might was cut off by Inko. What? Why did you assume I could do that? Considering you're Izuku's trainer you're not that smart when it comes to ideas. All Might just sweat dropped and felt kinda hurt. I thought this was a pretty good idea. The sound of Izuku making a discomfited grunt snapped All Might out of his thoughts and made Inko realize the true seriousness of the situation. All right, you said just try and pull the bullet out right. All Might nodded and grabbed the center of the blood-soaked webbing covering Izuku's abdomen. On 3. Dot 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 1. Dot 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 2. Dot 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 3. On 3, All Might ripped the webbing off Izuku with as much strength he could muster without turning into his buff form on accident, while Inko shot her right arm out above Izuku and was about to make the hand gesture to try and pull the bullet out, but there was no wound, only a scar of a slightly lighter color than Izuku's normal skin color. What? How? It's only been less than 15 minutes and it's turned into a scar. All Might then flipped the webbing over and saw the bullet was on the webbing as if it had been pushed onto it. And Ko on the overhand immediately broke down into tears to see that her son was fine and hugged Izuku crying out about how worried she was even though he was still unconscious and couldn't hear a word she was saying. Yuraka on the other hand took a breath of relief and smiled at the fact that Izuku was fine and slowly made her way over to both Inko and All Might and handed All Might the bandages. He has so many different powers rolled into one. All Might then looked at Izuku's now peaceful face before looking down at the bloody web to see that there were what seemed to be small black spots of blood underneath where the bullet was. All Might just looked at the blood with no emotion. Black blood. There was no way that this was because of low oxygen levels Izuku had nothing wrong with him. It must be some form of oil from the bullet but All Might still had his doubts in the back of his mind. Stories and jokes about black blood are told among heroes to frighten each other or insult one another but the term that it has meant since the first day it was made has remained the same. A monster, one for all will truly show whether or not this much power makes him the hero to replace me, or the monster to end me. God I hope I'm wrong about the latter. 
Izuku awoke to see the familiarity of his bedroom ceiling and the sound of a paper being flicked every so often. Finally up Hakid. Izuku sat up slowly and saw that All Might was at his desk reading through the different notes Izuku had made on different heroes for the last couple of years. I guess so dot 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 uh, dot 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 stomach hurts a little but I'm fine then it hit Izuku like a brick wall at the situation. All Might was in his room which was covered in All Might posters and All Might merch. Oh air. Sorry about the room All Might laughed a little but then pointed at the bandages around Izuku's abdominal area. It's fine kid. But do you want to explain what happened back there? You said to me when you figured out this sixth sense that it sends an impulse to your brain to warn you of incoming attacks. The blood on your clothes say otherwise Izuku thought about it and realized All Might was right. He didn't sense anything when he was actually shot and he didn't feel any pain until he knew about the wound himself. I don't know. I just didn't feel a thing when it happened Izuku then put a hand on where he was shot but felt nothing. How am I healed already? Don't gunshot wounds take a good few days to heal. All Might stopped looking though Izuku's notebook and closed it and looked at Izuku with a completely serious face. You have a healing factor quirk as well as your others. What should have taken about 5 days to heal happened in 15 minutes your body seemed to have pushed the bullet out of your muscle tissue and healed it. Izuku went through a few faces during the time All Might spoke, shock, excitement and finally confusion. Wait why are you so serious about this? Shouldn't this be something to be happy about? In normal circumstances yes dot 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 but dot 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 the bullet in part of the webbing was covered in black blood Izuku went pale and panicked. Wait what? What does that mean? All Might shrugged his shoulders. I have no clue but we're gonna go see someone who's come to Tokyo recently and he should help us figure out where this blood has come from All Might stood up and headed for the door. Be at the beach at 7am if you can with a half-hearted smile Izuku nodded at All Might as he left Izuku's room but looked back to say one last thing. I'm glad you're okay kid, rest up okay again Izuku responded with a nod and waited for All Might to leave and close the door and got up and headed to his computer slowly clutching his abs as they were still a little sore. I need to research different martial arts and make my own type of style. Something that can be fast and effective in combat but be able to capture or limit my opponent's movements Izuku started to browse the web looking at style upon style of fighting mentally noting everything he saw of use or could be useful later on. With more information and practice, he continued to do this until he literally fell asleep on his keyboard. Falling asleep on the keyboard was a bad move on Izuku's part as he now had lines all over the left side of his face where he fell asleep. Izuku groggily opened his eyes and looked at the clock to see the time and when he did Izuku felt wide awake almost instantly. 6.45. I'm gonna be late. Not wanting to waste any more time Izuku ran around his room finding any clothes he could find and burst out of his room not even bothering with breakfast. Izuku, said person stopped dead in their tracks and turned around to see his mother and co standing there with a face that almost had a mixed expression of happy, sad, annoyed and tired. Why yeah mom? Izuku had a feeling what about what she was angry about. Yagi-san told me the full story about what happened yesterday Izuku just looked slightly confused at the sound of that name. Yagi-san. Oh that must have been a name All Might gave her to use so that she wasn't suspicious then Izuku remembered what his mother actually just said. Off being a vigilante and getting shot, by the police no less. I thought you wanted to be a hero being a vigilante is near enough the opposite of that. All Might must have known that Inko would tell this to Izuku otherwise it would have made no sense that he said nothing to him about becoming a vigilante. Mom I'm sorry but I still want to be a hero. Being a vigilante was never my intention and Ko's expression softened a little at the sound of that but still kept a slightly stern face. You've already been given a vigilante name by the public. You're now Spider-Man in the eyes of the people Izuku looked down at the floor a little as he knew he was more than likely responsible for that name because of what he said to that girl in the alley. Mom I can't just stand around and do nothing when I have this much power and Ko started to look sad at what her son just said. But it's not your responsibility to help ye. This power makes it my responsibility to help. After Izuku shouted back there was nothing but silence in the room while shocked expressions remained on both Izuku and Inko. Izuku was shocked at himself for talking back, to his own mother no less, it was just something that he never did, maybe the stress and anger he's been holding in for all this time is starting to get to him. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what came over me. Izuku was only met with a hug from his mother who had tears in her eyes. No I should be sorry, I can't stop you but promise me, you won't come back hurt like that again Izuku smiled and hugged back. I promise. I need to head out again. I'll be back later. Izuku backed out of the hug and looked around for his phone to no prevail only for Inko to hold out his phone smiling although you could still tell she was hiding her sadness. Here. It was in your bag but I let your Rakasen have your number when she arrived here yesterday. Izuku just put the phone in his pocket and questioned his mother. Wait your Rakasen was here. When? Yesterday but you were passed out so I asked her to leave when you were healed and carried into your room with a nod and a wave Izuku thanked his mother and left through the front door which had certainly seen better days and ran off to the beach. Well for about most of the way there. Izuku had forgotten how fast he really was and now he was already 2 minutes away from the beach and Izuku was 90% sure that it had only been about 5 minutes since he left the house so he had some time to kill and went on his phone. Surprised to see that he had several messages in his phone when he turned it on. Contact. Momo-chan. Messages 5. 
contact, unknown, messages 3. Stopping completely in his tracks with a red face Izuku panicked about the fact he had Momo-chan saved on his contacts even though he didn't even remember adding her to his phone but decided to read her messages before panicking further. Momo-chan, 2.34pm, hey Midoriya-kun, sorry that I looked through your bag. In your phone dot 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 but I had no way of contacting you and I didn't know if you'd come back so. Yeah, Momo-chan, 2.36pm, oh yeah I remembered I had some more ideas for your costume design and web shooter so let me know when you're coming over by the central district again. Momo-chan, 2.45pm, OMFG. What the hell is wrong with those people? You were just trying to help them and the police try and arrest you. And not to mention they try and shoot you. Let me know if you're okay and not hurt. Momo-chan, 5.03pm, I've been watching the news and I guess you're somewhat famous now considering you're the first vigilante to appear in several years supposedly. One of the news broadcasters really has it out for you on Channel 6, I think it was J. Joanna Jameson or whatever her name was. Momo-chan, 8.42pm, please let me know if you're fine Midoriya-kun, I'm really starting to worry now, it's been more than 6 hours now. Izuku just stared at his phone in a slight dazed cheek slightly tinted pink only taking in half the information he just read. Momo-chan dot 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 was actually worried about me. First you're Araka-san and now Momo-chan, what is it with me and girls suddenly being friendly to me? And it doesn't help I can't even talk to them properly without panicking or stuttering like an idiot. Izuku used process of elimination and determined that the unknown number was probably Uraka and read his remaining messages. Unknown, 6.27pm, hi Deku-kun it's me Uraka, your mom gave me this number I hope you don't mind that. With a few taps on his phone Izuku added the number to his phone and changed the contact name before reading the other two messages. Uraka-san, 6.28pm, I hope you get better Deku-kun, when your coach came and carrying you covered in blood I was honestly so terrified. I decided to leave by my own choice as you needed some time to recover and your mom seemed a little unstable, I hope she's doing okay. You're Raka-san, 7.35pm, let me know when you're able to hang out or when you're down by the beach. I don't have anyone else that I know in the area apart from you, and I like the company. Smile plastered on his face Izuku now continued to walk towards the beach and replied to both messages saying roughly the same thing with a few words changed here and there saying that he was grateful for their concern and that he would meet them as soon as he could. Hey kid, glad to see you're okay All Might greeted the green-haired boy and then looked at the time on his phone. And you're actually early as well Izuku just remained silent mentally debating whether or not to bring up that All Might told his mother about the incident concerning the day prior. But instead decided to act like his normal self. Who? Yeah I took some rest now it's just a scar now. Ah All Might just laughed at his disciples nervousness as began to walk with Izuku following behind. So where exactly are we going All Might? who are going to meet letting out a loud laugh which resulted in blood spurting out of his mouth, All Might turned to Izuku with a big grin. We are going to visit a friend of mine who moved from a big company in New York Izuku just looked at All Might to say yes, but who? My boy does the name of Dr. Curtis Connor sound familiar to you? Speech thoughts. Mental communication. Phone. TV. Buff AM speech Buff AM thoughts. Recap. After dealing with the panic and madness of Izuku being shot All Might decided to take Izuku to Dr. Curtis Connors to see if the black blood Izuku supposedly possesses actually means anything or if it could be a threat to Izuku himself. Dr. Kurt Connors. As in the Dr. Connors of OSCORP Industries. Izuku looked as if he had just heard the impossible, which is weird considering what he's experienced in the last five months. Oh so you've heard of him then my boy. All Might sarcastically asked with a grin on his face. Let's see how much Midoriya knows actually knows about Connors All Might thought to himself as started to walk with Izuku following behind them. Heard of him. He's basically the scientist version of you. His work with Dr. Otto Octavius helped figure out how quirks work on a genetic level. But what is he doing in Tokyo? Shouldn't he be in New York City or? All Might shushed Izuku before he could start mumbling to himself for the entire journey. I regret asking you that, but never mind that we need to get moving and you're still training and if I remember your training schedule it should be. Cardio today so, let us run young Midoriya, taking Izuku completely by surprise because of his burst of. All Might as All Might turned into his buffed up state burst in the direction his was walking before. Leaving Izuku in a dust cloud of sand All Might continued to run across the beach at an incredible speed with Izuku only now just reacting and starting to run after him going into an all out sprint reducing the distance so there was only about 20 meters between him and All Might. Erm, um, aren't we going to draw a bit of attention running like this? Izuku shouted out to All Might trying to keep his breath at a steady rate. You're right, my boy. We need to cover more distance. Taking Izuku's question in a way he didn't expect, All Might leapt up into the air and landed on a nearby roof then jumping again into the sky. That's not what I meant. Izuku yelled as he attempted to leap up the wall of the same building All Might jumped onto but was only able to grab onto the edge of the roof. 
With his instincts kicking and Izuku kicked his feet off the wall and flung the lower half of his body backwards until he was almost doing a handstand and pushed off the edge so that his body followed his momentum doing a flip in the air putting Izuku in a semi-perfect landing so that he was able to back into a sprint. As he ran though Izuku just looked shocked at what he did. I'm definitely going to have to remember that Izuku then looked ahead and realized that All Might was already several buildings ahead and ran full speed and continued to leap over buildings to catch up with him. We are here, All Might exclaimed landing roof of an fairly well-built apartment building not too far from the city center. All Might, this is an apartment building. I thought we were gonna visit Dr. Connors. Izuku asked as he climbed up the last part of the building's wall joining All Might on top of the roof hands on his knees slightly out of breath. We are young Midoriya. All Might shouted as he pointed downwards at the floor making Izuku look really confused. Why are you pointing at the before Izuku could even finish his sentence his spider sense flare up making Izuku jump to the side as the floor beneath All Might opened up like a trap door causing Izuku to rush to the edge of the new formed hole. And jump down without any hesitation. Izuku landed at the bottom of the trap hole and in a crouched position and looked around to see everything was pitch black and silent making Izuku cautious and standing up taking a few steps forward only for lights to be turned on around Izuku causing him to raise his arm and be met with a figure right in front of him. You certainly weren't wrong when you said he had some extraordinary reflexes All Might the shadowy figure said seeming rather impressed at what Izuku just pulled off. Izuku lowered his arm and let his eyes adjust to the lights to see a man in his late twenties with brown hair and a long white scientific coat with the right sleeve folded and pinned due to the lack of a right arm the man had. It was Dr. Connors himself. D. Dr. Connors. I it's an honor to meet you Izuku stuttered out in nervousness similar to how he did when he met All Might for the first time five months ago. Connors only just laughed at Izuku's speech and actions before turning to the deflated All Might to his right. You also weren't wrong when you said he was brave and a nervous wreck at the same time Connors laughed as he held out his left hand as a greeting which Izuku quickly and nervously accepted by shaking it with his own. I've heard a lot about you Midori and might I say good work with those muggers yesterday Connors said making Izuku laugh nervously before Connors let go of his hand and turned around to a table that had a variety of different scientific instruments. Izuku then looked around the room to see that it was actually a fully functional laboratory with most of computer screens turned off. So Izuku, would I be correct in saying that your quirk was not one from birth? Connors asked picking up a syringe and taking the protective covering off the needle. Yes but I can't really give that many details on how I got them as they just kind of showed up Izuku started thinking back to the day his powers had awoken. Um, I see. Did he show you where you were shot yesterday? Connors asked as turned around showing the syringe he was holding. Izuku lifted up his shirt hesitantly to reveal his abdomen and the scar he acquired yesterday. This shouldn't hurt Connor said as he crouched down and slowly inserted the needle into the flesh just beside Izuku's scar and pulled back on the plunger making blood slowly fill up the barrel of the syringe. Connors then stood back up before taking the syringe and placing it in one of the many machines in his lab and then turning back to Izuku. My apologies Izuku but the machine will require time to splice then analyze your blood sample. If you would like, I prepared a combat training room that you can use to your leisure Connor suggested pointing to the opposite side of the lab which had a strong and secure metal door and a viewing window next to it. Izuku thanked Dr. Connors before heading through the combat room door and was surprised at how big the combat room was. It didn't help that the room was completely empty but had a grid-like pattern on every surface. This is probably why the building is a cover Izuku said marveling at the room not noticing the door closing behind him automatically and a section of the wall on the other side to reveal a robot with structural resemblance to a human emerge from the gap in the wall. Izuku's always cut short from the voice of Dr. Connors speaking through a microphone. This is a prototype combat android. It's designed to adjust its combat information constantly so using the same moves twice won't work. It will move and act like a human with a speed quirk so this will test both your mind and body. Are you ready? The moment Izuku nodded his spider sense flared up and he jumped back in instinct to see the android charging at him with his right arm reeled back ready to punch. Crap. I don't have time to think of a plan. Izuku thought to himself panicking as he underestimated the speed of the android. Izuku jumped over the android and flipped in the air so that he could shoot two web lines on the shoulders of the android pulling it over his head and slamming it onto the ground with a loud crash. Izuku knew that it wouldn't be long until the android would stand up so he backed away quickly and got into his new fighting stance which was him in a spread out crouch position with his left hand on the floor while his right arm was in an unreadable position so you couldn't tell if he would attack or defend. As the android stood up Izuku leapt at it and pulling himself towards it with a web zip and leading straight in with a kick right to the android's chest making it stumble backwards giving Izuku the advantage and allowing him to throw a barrage. Punches at the android but surprisingly the android avoided a few of the punches to gain some ground back sending both Izuku and the android into a pure punching spree that also included dodges and blocks to deal with opponent's hits. Behind the viewing window Connors looked in facilitation at Izuku's fight noticing that although he did seem to only have his reflexes and speed keeping him toe to toe with the android. He also had a surprising amount of strength behind every hit. I can understand why you told me about this kid all might. 
all this power yet he shows no physical change in mutation all mine on the other hand was watching izuku fight with concentration as he was still the boy's coach and had to tell him how to improve his new style as the both of them watched izuku fight a beep came from a computer near dr connor's and he read it before turning back to look at izuku with even more intrigued than before after a full 10 minutes of fighting both izuku and the android backed away from each other taking fighting stances once more the only difference being that izuku was now slightly out of breath as Izuku charged forwards yelling the android went completely limp making Izuku stop in his tracks and then turn his attention to the window to see Dr. Connor signaling him in. Izuku I'm glad you made use of the combat android but now we have to talk about this Connor said as he held up a vial that contained a small amount of pure black liquid. What is that? Izuku asked slightly scared as to what this liquid was but when he walked forward to take a closer look the liquid stuck towards the side of the glass pointing at Izuku. The thing is Izuku, we don't know. All we've know that it's a collection of quirks mixed with an unknown substance then exposed to large amounts of radiation and that it was also filtered through spider DNA. To put into simple terms, you're a subject of cross-species genetics. Cross-species genetics, Izuku asked in a confused stare. It's when the genetics of two different species cross over add mix together perfectly to create a perfect crossbreed. The New York branch of OSCORP had looks into this but every formula we had proved it was ultimately useless. But somehow whatever radiation this formula experienced has made the spider DNA mold perfectly with yours. Izuku then pointed to the black vial as the liquid started moving. Tell him why is it moving? All Might said with an unreadable expression causing Connors to sigh. The reason why it's moving is because dot 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 it's trying to connect back onto you. Based on movements and its genetic structure it's a symbiote, however it doesn't seem to be inflicting any harm to your body in fact it's actually making your body healthier and more powerful but I can't explain any way how without looking more into it Izuku nodded at the information happy that the thin residing within his body wasn't killing him but actually doing him good. All Might walked towards Izuku this time with a grin on his face. Kid, it's time for you to inherit one for all Izuku only looked at All Might in shock before waving his hands in front of himself. No 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 I can't accept it yet. I told you that I wanted to accept it when I mastered my spider powers. Unfortunately Izuku couldn't add any more comments as Connors intervened with what he had to say. You don't have a say in the matter Izuku, the amount of radiation and with how the symbiote seems to work one for all would kill you from the strength alone Izuku just looked at Connors in absolute confusion. What? That makes no sense one for all doesn't work like that does it? Izuku asked looking back at All Might. I may not have given all the information about one for all. It doesn't just carry strength across users, it releases all potential energy inside the current user. I mean I didn't get this much power from just seven other people's standard strength. All Might said then laughed as he then turned into his buff form and began to proclaim in loud tone but tried his best to speak in a normal tone. Young Midoriya, in the past five months you have already proven to be a fine vessel but you refused as you wanted to earn this power, this is you getting your reward. All Might could already see the emotion welling up in Izuku's eyes but ignored it and plucked one of the hairs from his head and held it in front of Izuku. Take this to heart Izuku, you earn this power fair and square. Izuku felt nothing but determination flowing throughout his whole body and also a little touch that he used his first name. That was until he heard three words from All Might that turned all that overflowing determination into pure confusion. Now eat this. All Might boomed referring to the long blonde strand of hair in his hand. Huh, you need to consume some of All Might's DNA for one for all to enter body and start taking effect Connors explained. T this is not exactly how I thought this would go. Izuku said to himself as he took the hair from All Might and stared at it for a couple seconds before putting it in his mouth and swallowing the hair with a big gulp. I, I eat the hair. But I don't feel any different Izuku stated as he looked around his body to look for any changes. Of course not. You need time to digest it. Now young Midori I will wait for you up top. All Might bellowed as he leapt up the long tunnel the two of them fell down. Just before Izuku tried to leap up and join him Dr. Connors caught Izuku's shoulder with his left hand to grab his attention. Before you go Izuku I have something to give you. All Might sent me photos of idea you had and well. I was intrigued say the least Connors laughed as he searched around his lab until he pulled out a small metal briefcase and opening it. Izuku again feeling touched that All Might had sent his drawings to someone to get his power helping gadgets. All Might seemed almost like a concerned parent at this point. I added a few different modifications of my own but it's essentially what you had drawn up Izuku now looked in awe at the set of web shooters in front of him and wasted no time and put them on his wrists and raised them up before firing a web line, the ceiling noticing that the webbing was completely straight and didn't splatter too much like his normal webs without the filter. Thank you so much Dr. Connors. I won't forget this. Izuku quickly spoke out as he went into a fit of bowing to thank Connors causing him to laugh at the boy's strange actions. That aside though you are welcome to use my combat room anytime you wish Izuku thanked Connors once more before crossing his arms over and firing two webs up into the tunnel and pulling himself back stretching the web before flinging himself up the tunnel with a large amount of force. As Izuku left Connors looked back around to two vials of liquid, one containing a pure sample of Izuku's blood while the other had the symbiote still wriggling around trying to break free or find some sort of opening. This could finally be the key to making my lizard regeneration formula. Times four months later. 
In the four months that have passed not much has changed since Izuku had met Yuraka, Momo and Dr. Connors. This is what Izuku naively thought but in reality so much had changed since then. Through training with both All Might and the combat androids Izuku's strength had near enough doubled along with his speed and that was without one for all, which Izuku refused to use until All Might felt the time was right. Another thing that Izuku only picked up on slightly was the fact that the people were starting to like Spider-Man with every heroic deed he did or stepped into. It even got to a point where the police officer who shot him even apologized publicly for the shot and blamed it on a bad day to save face, however newscasters like Jameson were always gonna say negative things about Spider-Man. One of the things Izuku did most during the four months was work with Dr. Connor seeing as he was the biggest help to finding out what his weaknesses were to his powers and help rid of them almost completely. Connors also helped find out more about the symbiote living in his body and came to the conclusion that it was in fact harmless as it had no main brain so it only helped its host. Also during the four months Izuku had become close with both Yuraka and Momo, he was able to talk to both of them without stuttering anymore. Apart from when the two met which was when Yuraka insisted that Izuku could call her Yurachan from now on while Momo started calling Izuku Deku-kun. Izuku was pretty much red that whole day. During the four months that the three of them spent together Momo and Yuraka slowly started gaining small crushes on Izuku which they of course kept hidden from Izuku himself and also themselves as they thought it would be a hopeless idea. All the while Izuku just remained oblivious to the two girls and stayed how he was. Well there was a half-truth. Izuku certainly enjoyed the company of both the two girls as time went by and it worked well for him seeing as they didn't mind hanging around during his training and they almost had a schedule for when they met up. Yuraka hung around with Izuku whenever he did work on the beach, which didn't last long with how quick he cleared up the place. But that eventually turned into sprints and swims for his training, the two would always talk or catch up whenever he took a break. Momo on the other hand enjoyed hanging around Izuku when he focused on training his spider powers as the two of them could be a little more intellectual in their conversations talking about quirk battle situations, quirk counters, ways of improving their own quirks and sometimes laugh at stupid freeze frame images of Jameson when she is in mid-shout. But now we're here, atop of Momo's apartment building where Momo was reading a notebook full of costume designs Izuku had drawn up while Izuku himself was doing one-handed push-ups with his left arm while his feet were up in the air. Honestly Deku-kun half of these costume designs are either dull, flashy or impractical Momo sighed out as she turned the page analyzing another set of costumes. 876, 877, 878, well I'm not exactly the creative type, that's more your area. 882, 883, 884 Izuku said between push-ups. Actually these two here aren't that bad Momo said turning the notebook around and pointing at the two designs. 890, 891, 892, why those two? 894, 895, 896 Izuku questioned as he looked at the hood and mask combo design and the spandex one suit. Momo froze and gained a tiny blush while thinking don't say the spandex. Don't say the spandex. Don't say the spandex. But managed to say. These suits are maneuverable and lightweight making them seem ideal for you and the designs on both outfits are exciting but not too stand out or flashy. Also both include a belt for extra gadget or web filters Izuku was impressed at her quick analysis of the suits but then added another thought. 904, 905, 906, if the underarm glider parts were added to the spandex suit it would be completely ideal for a hero suit while the other can be a vigilante suit seeing as it has a somewhat casual style to it. 909, 910, 911 Momo pulled a pencil out of her arm thanks to her quirk and added the underarm gliders to the drawing trying to add as much detail as possible. Like this, turning the notepad around once more while Izuku did the last two push-ups he needed to reach 1000 then pushed himself into the air and landed in front of Momo to have a good look at the added gliders. Yes that would be perfect. Izuku gushed as he took the drawing of the suit before remembering something then looking at his phone to then start panicking. Crap 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 I'm late. I was meant to meet Dr. Connors 5 minutes ago. Sorry Momo-chan I gotta go. Izuku quickly apologized before putting on his hoodie putting his hood up a leaping off the building going into a swing. As Izuku swung away in a hurry all the while Momo smiled as she took out her phone and called Yuraka. Hello, Yura-chan, I found one we can make. That's great. When shall we start? We can start tomorrow if that's okay. Of course. I'll message you the address in a second. Great. See you then. Hanging up the phone Momo walked back into the apartment building as she gave the roof one last look over seeing if Izuku left anything behind like he usually does and saw nothing. Well at least he's fixing the forgetfulness when he's in a rush. Sorry I'm late. Izuku yelled an apologetic tone as he landed in Dr. Connor's lab to be met with the doctor himself and All Might leaning against a wall. Don't worry about it kid All Might waved off as he indicated to the combat room door which Izuku complied. When Izuku entered the combat room he was surprised to see large machines in different places in the room one of them seeming to be a large punching machine with what seemed to be a lot of shock absorbers and padding. Right kid today is finally the day you start training with one for all. First we need to make sure you can activate it so to start off try punching that machine as hard as you can All Might spoke through the microphone. 
Izuku turned to face the punchy machine and attempted punch it with as much strength he could muster yelling in the process, and while the punch was powerful it didn't have any of one for all's power in it. Izuku looked at his hand a little sad seeing that he couldn't muster the extra power, but before he could apologize All Might spoke once again over the speakers, but this time in his buff form. Fret not my boy, it is okay to fail the first time. Your body has slowly adjusted itself to one for all these past months naturally, but you haven't used it so do prepare for some kickback. Izuku made a mental note of the kickback but then asked the question of how he should activate it making All Might slightly nervous. Ahaha, you see the thing is young Midoriya, I don't know how to explain it well but... Clench your butt while pouring all your heart into the attack and yell from the depths in your heart, smash. All Might shouted causing the speakers to ring making Izuku cover his ears in instinct. So put everything I can into the punch, right I can do this Izuku murmured to himself as he prepared himself once more pulling his arm back and closed his eyes in concentration before opening them back up and yelling at the top of his lungs. S-M-A-S-H. In a powerful mighty red blur Izuku's fist made contact with the punching machine sending it flying backwards and creating a huge crash as the machine had caved in on itself and was slowly breaking apart from the sheer power of Izuku's punch. Grinning like he was a little kid again Izuku triumphantly tried raising both his arms in the air and succeeded with the left arm but then felt the large throb of his right one. Izuku immediately went pale and tears began to form in the corners of his eyes as he clutched his shoulder falling to his knees and screaming in agonizing pain that he could now feel shooting up and down his arm as it limply hung to his side somehow, bare as the cloth had ripped off in the punch. Dr. Connors rushed into the combat room and to Izuku's side holding a pill out to Izuku. Take this, it should completely numb the pain for the next two to three hours still shaking from the all the pain Izuku took the pill and putting it in his mouth and swallowed it. Izuku slowly calmed down as the numbing agent worked almost instantly with the pain slowly fading away allowing Izuku to talk properly and not be so shaken up. Thank you Dr. Connors, I wasn't expecting that much kickback from that Izuku mumbled out as he wiped the tears away with his non-broken arm while Connors examined Izuku's arm to be surprised. You should be thanking yourself, from an attack like that your bones should be shattered at a minimum of 17 different places but from what I can tell, without x-rays, is that it's only broken in 5 or 6 places. Put that with your healing factor and you should be fully healed before the drug wears off. Izuku sighed in relief as he looked at his broken arm seeing the harsh bruises smothering the whole arm and that it was bent the wrong way in a few places. Surprisingly none of that freaked Izuku out but the thing that did was small amount of black that he saw crawl under his skin before disappearing into the bruises. What the heck was that? Izuku panicked jumping up from his knees about to hit his arm but then Connors reminded him of what the both of them learned over the four months. Stop Izuku. That's the symbiote. It's only trying to help heal you. It's nothing bad. Calming down and stopping Izuku from damaging his arm more. Izuku just looked down in silence before looking up and towards the window that All Might was behind and looked with pure determination as he made a fist with his left hand and shouted with a heart and voice full of determination. I'm ready to try again when my arm heals. All Might smiled almost like a proud father would at his son before saying to himself. That's the spirit kid. Speech thoughts. Mental communication. Phone. TV. Letter. President MIC speech. Buff AM speech. Buff AM thoughts. Recap, Izuku after dealing with a gunshot wound, meeting with the well-known Dr. Curtis Connors and having finally learned what the black blood was. Along with meeting Dr. Connors, Izuku was given possibility of training his combat style with battle androids, training his knowledge with both Dr. Connors and Momo all the while Izuku trained his body with all might. And as the hours turned into days and days turned into weeks and now here we are only a few days away from the UA entrance exam with Izuku enjoying one of his few days off from his busy schedule of, well everything. Izuku sat on his couch using a hand grip trainer as he watched the news play on the TV in front of him. With the appearance of the vigilante known as Spider-Man, crime has decreased by 8.5% and while some of the public believe he deserves to be put away, the police as well as several members of the government in charge of hero rulings are actually happy that they have a vigilante who looks out for the city and its people rather than their own sense of justice. Izuku had a small smile plastered on his face as his mother entered the living room holding a large package with a letter on top. Izuku sweetie, there was a package outside for you and a letter came with it and Ko set the suitcase on the table in front of Izuku and handed him the letter. Thanks mom Izuku smiled as he took took the letter and opened it up to see that the piece of paper inside had writing on both sides in two different sets of handwriting both of which he recognized almost instantly, Momo's and Yuraka's. Before Izuku could even start reading the house phone went off which Inko insisted on getting while telling her son to just open his package without her. Hey Deku-kun, me and Momo-chan decided we wanted to give something in return for saving so many people, me included. Momo will go into more detail about the suit but I helped with with web design on the green parts of the hoodie and mask. We hope you like it. Izuku smiled at what he gathered was Yuraka's part of the letter and decided to open up the case before reading Momo's part of the letter as it would probably state everything he needed to know about the suit. Placing both of his hands on either side of the package and opened it to reveal the front of the hoodie Uraraka mentioned but it had been folded in a way so that the white spider emblem on the front of the hoodie was the first thing he saw. 
Izuku lifted the hoodie up out of the box and held it by the shoulders out in front of himself and admired what he saw, a light yet what seemed to be a strong and flexible material that was black on the chest, underarms and back of the whole thing. The thing that really stood out to Izuku was the previously mentioned green and black web-styled pattern on the rest of the hoodie, the forearms, hood and shoulders. Not wanting to just admire it anymore, Izuku took everything out of the box and put on the whole outfit but left the mask around his neck while the large green goggles rested on his forehead so that he could admire the whole outfit with his own eyes. As soon as Izuku finished putting his fingerless gloves that went halfway up his forearms and had little holes for Izuku to change settings on his web shooters or insert future filters as Momo knew he was planning to use web filters. Izuku then picked up the letter and began to read Momo's part of the letter. Hi Deku-kun, your chan should have gone over why we made this for you so I'll go straight to the details. The hoodie is made from a custom fabric that is light, flexible and should be strong enough to protect you from low caliber bullets but it isn't indestructible so please don't break it, we worked hard on it. The pants are similar to the hoodie but aren't that strong so we added knee padding so you can deal more damage or withstand more damage so your knees don't become a vital weakness. The mask is made of what could be called a filter fabric so smoke and other gases shouldn't be a problem. The shoes don't exactly go with the rest of the outfit but they styled so you can wear them as everyday shoes and be able to use your spider powers on the fly. The goggles if I'm honest are what I'm proud of most as they look green on the outside while they're clear to look through. They also have slight night vision properties so dark places shouldn't be a problem for you. I hope you like it, Deku-kun. Izuku felt spoiled, he felt like he didn't deserve the kindness that the two girls were showing him and started to feel tears in the corners of his eyes from the gratitude he felt towards them but rubbed them away with his hand as he heard his mom entering the room. Oh my, Izuku you do look cool in that and co-complimented making Izuku feel slightly embarrassed at the comment but then both of their attentions were turned towards the radio static now coming from Izuku's room. I didn't think that this would actually pick up on the police's radio wavelength. Izuku was surprised to hear the static and rushed into his room getting the radio from underneath his bed before tweaking with the rotisserie knobs on it so that the signal became clear. I repeat, a hostage situation has occurred in downtown. A small band of quirked criminals have taken, from what we have gathered to be, six hostages and are demanding large sums of cash. We need all available forces here at SAP. As the officer finished speaking Izuku looked at his mother who gave a sigh and then told him to go ahead as she knew he would go anyway so it would be pointless in complaining. With a burst of speed Izuku rushed out of the room grabbing several small little containers that were on his desk and shoved them in his pockets before running towards the open sliding glass door in his house and leaping out while bringing up his mask covering the lower half of his face as well as bringing down his goggles over his eyes and then leapt off of the small balcony and went into a web swing carrying his momentum from the leap. It didn't take Izuku long at all to find the commotion at all since there was a warehouse building surrounded by police cars with officers behind them and their guns aimed at the building. Further back, however, was a large crowd of people along with several news vans that had all cameras pointed towards the police and warehouse. Izuku saw Tsukachi Neyamasa giving orders looking annoyed and swung down near him and was met with several guns pointed at him by several on-edge cops. Guns down many safe Tsukachi side as he walked up to Izuku and gave an almost annoyed laugh. You're certainly faster than any of the heroes on call, I'll give you that Izuku was certainly surprised by that as he thought at least some heroes would be here. The reason as to why there was a mutual respect and understanding between these two was due to the fact that All Might had explained to Izuku that Tsukachi was a cop he knew and trusted personally. It also helped that he was also the reason as to why the police force was being nicer towards Spider-Man as he explained that he was actually doing good for the city. We can confirm 12 targets in strategically placed parts of the warehouse that we can't confirm as they are way too well placed for us to see. Weapons are unknown apart from one of them using a custom 1911 Cabot pistol that they made the threat with so we assume each of them would at least have one as a weapon Tsukachi said annoyed as he knew that although they had more men, these criminals had the upper hand here. Can you show me any possible entry points that I can exploit? Officer Neyamasa. Izuku asked in his vigilante voice, which was literally his normal voice just a bit deeper. Of course, Takachi said as he waved over one of the officers near the both of them and took the tablet from the officer's hands to show Izuku a 3D layout of the building with certain sections of it highlighted. As you can see from this there's an air vent on the roof that could be removed with enough force. That would be the most ideal entry point for you as they don't know you're here yet so the element of surprise is still on your side. Izuku nodded at Takachi's suggestion and took several steps back but was still facing the warehouse. Have your men enter in 10 minutes officer Neyamasa. It should all be over by then Izuku said as he went into a sprint and ran past a few cops and used one of the cop cars as a large step before leaping diagonally into the air and towards the warehouse clearing the two stories of height but had to use his web zip to reduce the distance that was left. How can you trust a guy who wears a mask? One officer asked Takachi as they came up beside him clearly doubtful about having Spider-Man be of any help. Because I trust him what he does is also right. He's a symbol people can look up to the officer just looked at Takachi confused. But isn't that all might is for? You know being the symbol of peace and all another officer chimed in who heard the conversation. 
All Might and nearly all other heroes deal with large-scale disasters or villains with dangerous quirks, while we have to deal with the little things like muggings and stuff like that. Spider-Man is one of the only people willing to put his neck on the line to do either one of the two. Yes, he does seem young, but his heart and mind are full of courage that show a deep compassion for Justice the officer that asked Takachi as well as a few others that heard him all gave small nods and had expressions on their faces that read that they were considering how they felt about Spider-Man. While the cops were discussing their views on Spider-Man, Izuku had found the air vent Takachi had told him about and then examined how tightly the vent was connected to the roof before shooting a web line at it then pulling it with his right arm and ripping the vent off with the sound of screeching metal, regretting it as he had sensitive ears and also because he might have just gave away his position. Knowing he was on a time limit that he gave to himself Izuku jumped down into the warehouse and landed into a crouching position looking around and saw the hallway he had entered into was dimly lit but it wasn't an issue to Izuku. In fact it was actually an advantage to him as he could blend in the shadows thanks to his new outfit. Izuku quickly covered up the hole in the roof with some large splatters of webbing to stop the light getting in and the leapt onto the ceiling and began crawling through the corridor as quietly and as quickly as he could while also listening out for any sounds that could indicate any of the captors. After a minute of scouting around the top floor Izuku found the stairs to the floor below and that it was being guarded by two lightly armored soldiers holding standard issue AK 47s along with a pistol holstered to their sides. Behind the two captors were a small child that was blindfolded and gagged as well as having rope tied around her wrists and ankles preventing her from moving, talking, or to try and make an escape. Might be time to test Dr. Connor's new prototype web filters, Izuku thought as he got down from the ceiling and hid behind a corner before reached into his pocket and got out two containers before quietly inserting them into his web shooters. Izuku knew he couldn't waste any more time and crawled on the wall then onto the ceiling avoiding any of the lights and calming his breathing so it was almost completely silent. Now above the captors Izuku prepared himself to attack but froze when he heard radio static. Check out what that noise was. I have a feeling it was more than just the foundation shaking the voice which Izuku assumed was the one in charge and listened to how the conversation played out. Roger that one of captors said as they turned around and pushed the girl to the ground before the two of them started to walk forward but made of the mistake of giving Izuku space to strike from behind. Izuku dropped down from the ceiling landing on the floor but pushed off almost immediately so that he had leapt towards the two captors before going in between the two and elbowing both of them in the head making them stagger and fall to the side onto the walls. Not wasting the opportunity Izuku and crossed his arms over each other and began firing webs at the two so their arms and legs were stuck to the walls. Now smiling underneath his mask Izuku watched as his webs solidified sealing them in place before taking the filters out and firing two more web shots so that the captors mouths were covered but their noses weren't so they could at least still breathe. Knowing that the captors couldn't escape Izuku walked over to the small girl and removed her blindfolded and instantly saw that her eyes were red from crying and were full of fear. Oh god, I've never had to deal with kids when being Spider-Man. Come on Izuku get it together Izuku thought to himself as he gave himself a moral boost before talking to the kid. I'm gonna take this off. Promise me you'll keep quiet okay. Izuku spoke in a quiet voice only she could hear. The child nodded to which Izuku removed the cloth that was stopping her from talking and then spoke to the child once more as he undid the ropes binding her arms and legs. Stay here and keep quiet. I'm going to deal with the rest of them downstairs Izuku whispered comfortingly and turned around to head to the lower floor but felt a tug on the back of his hoodie and looked around at the girl and saw that she was crying. He please save my mama and sister. The girl sobbed quietly, thinking that Izuku didn't care about the hostages. I promise, they'll be safe and sound. I'll be back here to bring you to them in a few minutes Izuku stated before making his way down the stairs to the bottom floor but crawling back onto the ceiling so that Izuku could scout out the room with getting spotted. Alright so there's two covering the entrance, two guarding the five remaining hostages, four in the center playing cards with guns by their feet and the last two at the back of the warehouse behind a desk which I assume one of them is the one in charge. Best line of approach would be to deal with the two guarding the hostages then the four playing cards. From there I can pick off the leader and the guy next to him then if I time this right the two by the door will be easy to deal with. Izuku thought with a slight smile making a plan of attack. Izuku crawled along the wall so that he was in between the two captors but also in line with the four playing cards. And then pushed off as hard as he could without using one for all and fire out two web lines on either side of him that connected to both of the captors pulling them forwards with a large amount of force which led to them crashing into the four playing cards when Izuku swung his arms across, knocking all six of them out. Izuku spun around quickly while in midair so that he facing the now shocked boss and pulled himself forward with a web zip then fired two web shots at the boss's hands sticking them to the table instantly. Quickly landing on desk and turning his attention to the armed guard only a meter and a half away Izuku shot a line of web at the gun he was trying to raise and pulled it out of his hands and swung it above his head once before smacking him over the head with it rendering him unconscious instantly. Knowing by the fact no shots had been fired at him while he dealt with the rest of the captors, Izuku assumed the two guarding the door were in shock and possibly fear. 
Izuku took this opportunity and slowly turned around and stared at the two with his fists clenched in what could be seen a both badass and a little unnecessary pose but it was still effective as the two of them were trembling from fear. And while one of them had a pistol aimed at him as well as his hand which had fire in his palm. Before either of the two could do anything the police burst through the door shouting the usual stuff but they stopped when they saw the pile of unconscious men in the center of the room. While they dealt with two captors Izuku slowly made his way up to the second floor to collect the girl he saved earlier who was happy that he had come back. You're back. Did you save them? The small girl asked with hope in her eyes. Izuku held out his hand and said in a comforting tone, Let's go and see. The girl grabbed Izuku's hand and pulled them along down the stairs into the bottom floor where the cops were untying the remainder of the hostages. As the girl spotted her other family members she let go of Izuku's hand and ran towards them and hugged them. The two of them both had frog-like features but the girl that Izuku assumed to be the older sister had the least amount of frog features but she did have slightly larger than average eyes and hands. Izuku did like the bow type of style that she did with her hair though. Thank you Spider-Man, Ribbit we were so worried no one would come to help the mother said with tears in the corners of her eyes and a smile over plastered over her face. It was nothing, I was just happy to help Izuku said in his vigilante voice before turning to Takachi who was waiting to talk to him while standing behind him. I'll admit, I didn't think you would be able to pull this off alone but there wasn't even a single shot fired and all hostages are all safe. You truly are a hero, and while the rest of the city might say otherwise, we at the police see you as a hero to this city Takachi stated in a thankful tone putting a hand on Izuku's shoulder. I, I don't know what to say Izuku said as he momentarily broke out of his vigilante voice but regained his composure. You don't have to say anything, now get going we got this covered Takachi said waving Izuku off assuring him that he and the other officers had the rest of situation under control. Izuku nodded then walked out of the building and into the light of day and was surprisingly met with cheers and shouts. Yes yeah, Spider-Man, I knew you could do it. You kicked those guys asses. You're so cool. Izuku couldn't help but smile at the cheers he was getting. Sure he had gotten a bit of public praise here and there but never really on this scale. In the corner of his eye Izuku also noticed that the family that he had saved moments ago had run out and rejoined what Izuku seemed to be the father and brother of the family both of which had frog-like features similar to the people he saved. The father looked towards Izuku and gave a thankful nod. Izuku gave the man a thumbs up before leaping into the air and started swinging away from the warehouse with a smile behind his mask and a feeling in his heart that made him realize he truly was doing the right thing. His gut feeling was right all along vigilantes, while the good ones were just heroes without public approval. Now I just need to use the next few days of study time. The few days that were left before UAS exam went by faster than Izuku would have liked as every time he even attempted to study the radio went off making him have to save someone or stop someone. That alone killed about an hour to two hours of Izuku's time but it did also suffice his combat training and experience so that was a plus. But knowing that this was the night before the exam Izuku couldn't afford to go on a wild goose chase with every possible problem that came up on the radio. So he had it switched off for tonight while he laid in a self-made web hammock attached to the ceiling while reading a hero textbook. Question 28. What is the best strategy for taking down a fire-based quirk villain? Izuku muttered as he read one of the questions from the textbook then put it face down on his chest so he couldn't see the answer. Assess how much of a scale the fire can be controlled or produced then use water to make the villains quirk ineffective before subduing them with flame-proof materials. Izuku said to himself staring at the ceiling before glancing back at his textbook and smiling triumphantly at getting the question right. Izuku then looked down on his bedside to see that it was already past midnight and decided to sleep on his web hammock as it was surprisingly comfortable for him. Probably just a side effect of the spider genes with a stretch and a yawn Izuku shut his eyes trying to get at least a good amount of sleep. When Izuku opened his eyes he wasn't met with his familiar white ceiling but was instead greeted with white room that looked like it went on forever in every direction. Huh. Izuku yelled out on instinct at the sight of where he was. And smack bam in the middle, a couple meters from Izuku himself, was a floating black orb just sitting there doing nothing whatsoever. The very presence of it made Izuku walk towards it in curiosity wondering only what on earth it was. When Izuku reached the orb he slowly and hesitating reached forward with his right hand to which the orb began to form a lump which then began to take the shape of a deformed hand which tried to reach out to Izuku. Knowing that his curiosity to find out what exactly this thing was wouldn't hurt him as it was his own dream Izuku grabbed the hand firmly only to feel his head pulse out in pain. Izuku quickly let go of the orb's hand and looked at it to see the hand was no longer deformed but it now looked normal no, it was identical to Izuku's own hand but it was completely jet black. What the, is, Izuku's eyes widened at the voice and looked around for a source but shivered slightly at the realization of that it was coming from the orb itself. Izuku, the voice itself sounds scratchy and awful, almost like it had a lifelong sickness in its throat and was speaking for the first time in a long time. What are you, Izuku asked trying to build some courage against this thing. Izuku, the orb said a little louder than before scaring Izuku and making him stagger backwards slightly at how it was slowly starting to sound human. What are you, now gaining back his courage Izuku asked the orb directly. Izuku felt his spider sense flare up in his head and prepared for the worst taking a battle stance but as he did he heard another voice. 
Izuku, you're gonna be late. In the loud sound of his mother's voice Izuku's eyes snapped open as he realized that the whole thing with the orb was a dream. That realization didn't last long however as he still felt his spider sense going off and at the sound of a snap Izuku's web hammock broke making Izuku have to do a midair roll so he could land on all fours. With a quick glance at the time Izuku knew he forgot to set his alarm as it was 7.52, just over half an hour to when he had to be at UA for the entrance exam. I don't have time to get the train and I wouldn't be able to be at my best if I ran their full sprint. Damn it I'm gonna have to risk it and use my spider powers Izuku thought as he rushed to get his school uniform on along with his custom shoes from Momo and Yuraka. Bursting out of his room like a complete mess Izuku strapped his web shooters onto his wrists before picking up his pre-packed bag and ran for the door but did a quick turnaround so he could fire a web line at the breakfast bar on the kitchen table before pulling it towards him. Closing the door behind him Izuku immediately leapt into the air and began web zipping across the city making sure to avoid largely populated areas and keep into the shadows as he couldn't risk people knowing that he was Spider-Man before he even got into UA. Phew, I made it in time Izuku sighed out in relief as he ran through the front gates of UA only a little bit out of breath from the rush across Tokyo. I really should have grabbed something else, it's freezing Izuku thought as he breathed into his hands to warm them up which only worked a little bit. Before Izuku could actually warm himself up he was met with a voice he hasn't heard in months but couldn't forget the angry tone of it. Move aside, Deku. Get out of my way or you're dead, you bastard. Bakugo growled at Izuku in what mostly seemed like annoyance. And morning catchin', let's both do our best today. Izuku spoke back in a nervous stutter as he was still afraid of him. In a surprise twist to Izuku's system, Bakugo completely ignored him and walked straight past him now acting as if he didn't exist. Wait, what have I done now? Izuku contemplated with a sad expression but it was thankfully short-lived as he felt a tap on his shoulder and was met with the bright smile of Yuraka. Oh hey Yura-chan Izuku smiled at her trying to force out his previous thoughts. Hi Deku-kun, who was that just now? Yuraka asked with curiosity looking over to Bakugo who was now starting to get recognized by some of the other students as he walked up the stairs to UAS multiple front entrance. Do you remember I that I told you and Momo-chan about? Well that was him just then. Izuku explained turning away slightly so he could glance at Bakugo and actually felt a bit of anger rise up inside him. Wait, why am I angry? I'm never normally angry at Kachin. Izuku thought to himself as he shivered at the feeling as if his skin had just crawled. Wait that's Kachin. I thought he'd look a little nicer and not like a walking explosion Yuraka said with a little giggle that made Izuku try and hold in a laugh. When the two of them finally gained composure they headed into the UA building and were told to head to one of the main halls so that they could commence the written part of the exam. Fortunately for Izuku most of the written exam consisted of stuff he was quite familiar with or he could figure out easily from past experiences as Spider-Man. Sure the odd question here and there threw him for a loop but by the end of the hour and a half given Izuku was sure he had only just passed the written side of the exam. Unfortunately though it started to go downhill from there for Izuku as he got called out in the middle of President Mike's opening speech about the practical part of the exam by what seemed to be someone who was incredibly serious about getting into UA. Izuku gathered that the serious guy didn't like him from the harsh glare he got when he was called out. Yuraka did glare back at him on Izuku's behalf which he was thankful for. Then it came round to the practical exam itself, more specifically the bus journey to test area B because Izuku was wearing his baggy green and black tracksuit it made his physical appearance seem like he was just scrawny teen like he did before all his powers came along. This in turn made literally everyone think that he was a weakling and not even worthy of second glance. Come Deku Kun cheer up, you can just prove them all wrong when this starts Yuraka stated with a smile to try and comfort Izuku. Yeah I guess you're right Izuku said trembling a little as it was finally setting into him that this was the UA exam that would be the real starting line to becoming a hero. The old man that was driving the bus said that everyone had to get out. When Izuku and Yuraka got out of the bus they gasped at sheer size of the test arena as it was literally the size of a city. Izuku momentarily froze from the, the intimidation he felt just from the city alone and was now behind the crowd of examinees but not even taking a single step forward towards Yuraka. Izuku felt a large hand on his shoulder and flinched at the contact. If your goal was to distract and annoy other people wanting to get into this school then you are certainly succeeding the serious boy with glasses from earlier said in a threatening tone that went with the glare he was giving Izuku. And no I wasn't. Well that's what it certainly seems like. If you're here for fun then just go home already, I mean, no offense, you don't look like you belong here. The serious boy stated as he focused on the gate to the test site. While Izuku began walking to the gate himself he got pushed by someone walking behind him and fell to the floor which got everyone else's attention and they began snickering and laughing at Izuku while Yuraka gave him a sympathetic gaze. IMD begin. Everyone turned around to where President Mike was and looked in confusion as his voice boomed across the large amount of land to each test site. What's wrong? There are no countdowns in a real fight. Run run run. Izuku thought about it for a brief second and it did make sense to not have a countdown but then remembered what he was talking about and looked towards the front entrance of the test site seeing that everyone else was running towards it with pure determination. 
Izuku mentally cursed his own idiocy and decided to try out a new web zip technique to get ahead of the rest of the examinees. Quickly reaching into his pocket and strapping his goggles to his head, Izuku threw his arms out in front of himself and fired out two web lines on both sides of the gate and pulled the webbing back and stretching it out as far as he could before jumping up and relaxing his arms so that he could be flung forward with powerful speed that easily overtook all the other examinees, making them look in wide-eyed awe at the beginning spectacle he had just pulled off. Because most of the examinees had got distracted by the web zip stunt and slowed down slightly, Iraka was able to pull ahead with Izuku and was determined to try and catch up to his level at some point but knew right now he had a massive lead on her. Still hurtling through the air at an extreme speed Izuku saw that some of the level 1 and 2 robots were bursting through the walls of buildings and noticed the obvious and fragile weak points on their backs. With some quick thinking Izuku began firing web lines at these weak points whenever he passed a robot and with his momentum alone he was pulling out their power cores shutting them all down in seconds so Izuku could take another then another and so on until his momentum began to die down. Okay so that was 4 1 pointers and 3 2 pointers so that's an easy 10 points. Now I need to find a large clearing that's a guaranteed place where they'd place robots to ambush us. Izuku thought to himself now swinging through the city's empty streets to get a better grasp of his surroundings and with a full momentum swing Izuku launched himself into the air above the buildings and a quick spin to look around and saw that had already passed the only big clearing in the test site a while ago and web zipped across the rooftops to get to the clearing. Arriving a minute later at the clearing Izuku looked in shock at how everyone else had already gotten here and darted his head around looking for any robots anyone might have not finished off. Ignoring the loud exclaims of people saying their scores and jumped back at the surge of his spider sense as a massive explosion happened roughly a block away from where Izuku was and seconds later a colossal sized green robot emerged from the where the explosion happened causing everyone to start running in fear. This included Izuku but he quickly reminded himself he stared down the wrong end of a gun which was a worse feeling than this. Five minutes remaining. Crap. There's not much time and now they've already brought out what I assume to be the zero pointer. Oh crap. There's people stuck under bits of debris mentally panicking Izuku ran towards people who were trapped under large pieces of concrete and helped them by lifting it off them. After saving a handful of people Izuku looked around to see if anyone else. Oh what? Uh, Izuku froze on the spot in fear from the little yelp of a sweet sounding voice that he knew belonged to Yuraka. Turning around hesitantly Izuku prayed it was just his mind playing tricks on him but there trapped underneath a large amount of concrete that could have possibly crushed and broken her leg was Yuraka trying to crawl away from the now quickly approaching robot. Deku dot 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 kun dot dot dot. The pain in her voice made Izuku's hand clench into a fist as all other emotions drained out of his body. He was now in a Spider-Man thought track. Izuku didn't care if this stunt would reveal him as Tokyo's most well-known vigilante, he just knew he had to save Yuraka, she was one of his first proper friends along with Momo and he couldn't allow something to hurt them and get away with it. With no game plan and just going with gut instincts Izuku charged forward at full sprint towards the robotic behemoth and clenched his right fist hard and reeling it back slightly as the cloth around it ripped off. Not even caring about the damage it would do to his body Izuku sent as much energy he could muster into his legs and leapt up towards the behemoth in a blur threw his fist forward while closing his eyes knowing that this was going to hurt a lot. Without even realizing Izuku had shouted out something from instinct that made Yuraka blush slightly while he flew forward at the monstrous robot. Get away from her. S-M-I-S-H. Izuku thought the second part in his head as he thought that would be the key to activating one for all as that's what it sounded like when All Might talked about it. Izuku felt the impact for a brief moment then felt numbness in his legs and arm which he knew would be replaced with agony in a couple seconds. When he opened his eyes to inspect the damage he saw nothing. Izuku was at first confused by the lack of a giant robot in front of him but with a quick glance behind him he saw the damage of what he did. He had gone straight through the robot destroying it into nothing but scrap metal that was coming apart piece by piece and the whole body of the behemoth was now a whole 20 meters in the air because of how much power hit the thing. Everyone including Izuku was just staring at the pure destructive power that he possessed with shock and awe not even bothering to run away from the now scattering debris as they didn't know how to comprehend the whole situation. The serious guy with the glasses looked at Izuku with a look of dumbfound and a little bit of respect. Yuraka looked up in amazement at what power Izuku had been keeping to himself. While everyone in test site B was staring at the shattered remains of the zero-point robot Izuku began to lose his upward momentum and felt all the pain hitting his body in one blow. Izuku could only scream in pain at how his body was now consumed with agony and quickly tried to reach into one of the zippable pockets in his pants with his left hand and got one of the numbing pills Dr. Connors gave him in preparation for the exam and quickly swallowed it hoping that it would take effect really quickly. As the pain slowly faded Izuku finally tried to put some thoughts together in his head. I can't land in this state or I'll die. Right okay. I could try a punch to the ground, no that's too risky. A web swing. No the momentum I'm falling it would dislocate my arm in an instant. What about no that wouldn't work either. Come on, come on, think. Izuku really couldn't think of anything to stop his fall but in the corner of his eye he spotted Yuraka running towards where he was going to land with a slightly awkward movement in her right leg. Yeku-kun. 
With complete panic in her voice, Yuraka jumped onto a bit of destroyed robot and gave it a touch with all five of her fingers, making it float and waited for Izuku to fall to a point where she could touch him. Izuku could see what she was doing and trusted her and closed his eyes in preparation. Smek. Izuku felt the full force of Yuraka's slap and only fell for a second more before he began to hover a couple feet above the floor. Our release. With that one word and a hand gesture from Yuraka, Izuku and about five robots fell to the ground with a variety of thuds and crashes. Izuku turned his head and looked over at Yuraka and gave her a big smile as a for of thanks as she did the same back before covering her mouth and throwing up due to the weakness of her quirk. I hope your chan didn't get hurt too bad Izuku thought before gaining a panicked expression and began dragging himself along the floor with his left arm. Crap, 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 I totally forgot. I only have ten poi. It's all over. Those three words filled Izuku with complete dread and almost brought him to tears but instead he lifted up his green goggles so that they were on his forehead and wiped his eyes before turning his hand into a fist becoming angry at himself. Damn it, I wasn't ready. I came in thinking this extra power would be enough but I just became blinded in the process. I guess there truly is a large amount of responsibility to be had with power like this. Contemplating over this fact and the slow feeling of his bones moving back into place thanks to the symbiote in his body Izuku didn't pick up on the large crowd gathering around him and talking about the power he just displayed. Holy shit did you see that? It would be smarter to ask who didn't see that. This kid must be some kind of monster if he has that kind of power. I mean did you see how he blazed past everyone at the start? Yeah he was like a fucking bullet. While people were gushing over Izuku's performance a small old lady wearing a rather peculiar outfit came over and started handing out gummy sweets to everyone before taking one look at Izuku and seemed rather shocked. Oh dear, your own quirk did this to you. Recovery girl asked Izuku snapping him out of his little trance. W well I guess you could say that, and my body isn't too used to the strength of it yet Izuku said nervously in a quiet tone so only recovery girl could hear. Oh, I see, could you hold up your left arm please dear. Recovery girl asked which got responded with a nod from Izuku and him holding his left arm up to her. Recovery girl bent down slightly and puckered her lips before they extended towards Izuku's arm. The moment the two came into contact with each other Izuku's whole body was consumed with a faint green aura for only a second then he was able to feel his whole body again and stood up moving them about to see they were fully healed. Recovery girl on the other hand was shocked at how so much damage was healed in just a second. Izuku noticed it too but just assumed it was the combined effort of the symbiote and his body and recovery girl's quirk. Realizing about Yuraka's condition Izuku quickly rushed over to her on top of the broken piece of robot. Yura-chan, are you okay? With complete concern over his face Izuku lifted Yuraka up slightly. Yeah I'm fine. Just a little nauseous Yuraka smiled out trying not to be sick over Izuku by holding one of her hands over her mouth and the other over her stomach. Izuku could tell she lying because he remembered that he saw the state of her ankle earlier when she ran ran over to him. Izuku thought of the right thing to do and picked Yuraka up and brought her over to recovery girl. Is she hurt too dear? Izuku nodded at the question which led to Yuraka being healed after a couple of seconds. T thanks Deku-kun but you really didn't have to do that Yuraka said with a sight blush. You were hurt. What kind of friend would I be if I didn't help you Izuku stated with a bright smile as he let Yuraka down onto her feet. I, I guess you're right Yuraka stuttered unintentionally while turning away. Why does he have to look so cute when he smiles like that? While Izuku and Yuraka talked to one another and recovery girl healed other examinees that were harmed, the serious boy with glasses looked at Izuku from a relatively far distance with a look of envy. None of them are picking up on the bigger picture. Not only did he save that girl from the zero pointer but he saved a handful of other people as well, even though he knew how little points he had and how much time was left. Damn it. I mean if this wasn't an exam I'd do the. Oh, if that's something they'd take into consideration then he. Damn it as he thought that the serious boy gritted his teeth cursing himself for being so blind. Izuku on the other hand had just come to a realization that made him go pale. I only scored 10 points. Speech thoughts. Mental communication. Phone. TV. Letter. Flashback. Present MIC speech. Buff AM speech. Buff AM thoughts. Recap. After a long time coming Izuku finally dealt with the UA entrance exam and was pretty certain he had just failed his whole exam because of what he did in his practical exam. While he did have a strong start Izuku's performance quickly went downhill as the monstrous zero point robot showed up. This is what lead to Izuku to using one for all to completely obliterating the thing in one rage-fueled punch but also learning that his inherited power was something that required large amounts of responsibility to use. Literally as Izuku had just gotten healed up the UA judges were already talking about the surprise turn of events with all what happened and how the scores were already looking based on what they had seen alone. This has certainly been an odd exam this year. In tied first place we have examined number 2233, Katsuki Bakugu, with zero rescue points but an outstanding 77 villain points. He wasn't even slowing down during the second half when everyone else was. This kid is definitely tough. Then you have examine number 2238, Izuku Midoriya, on the opposite side of the spectrum only scoring 10 villain points but a massive 67 rescue points making him tied with young Bakugo for first. It's been a while since we had two people come first in the exam. 
These two are complete opposites to one another yet they on the exact same level. Not to mention the pure speed and power that this Midoriya showed against the Zero Pointer. It's been a very long time since anyone actually destroyed the thing in a way he did. Yes, but that brings us to the final matter. This Midoriya boy showed powers and techniques very similar to that of the Vigilante Spider-Man, and this is something we can't ignore. Silence fell over the room for a brief moment. I agree and we've never had a problem like this before. Just interview the kid to see if he's worth taking in or not, I don't have time for pointless decisions. Cold is always Aizawa. But it does raise a point, why not interview the boy to see if he'd be a honest student at this school or not? So it's agreed then. Yes all of them said in unison. I'll let present Mike know to bring him here right away. Back at the UA main building Izuku was staring into thin air as he kept thinking over and over in his head about how he had failed his entry into UA and how he had failed All Might at being a proper successor. During his little days Izuku failed to notice present Mike a couple meters behind him now getting off of the phone and walking up behind Izuku. Hey young listener, I need you to come with me. Present Mike stated putting a hand on Izuku's shoulder startling him and completely shocking Izuku at the fact he was being pulled aside by one of his all-time favorite heroes. Why yeah sure, see can I ask why? Izuku asked in nervous curiosity as both he and Present Mike began walking deeper and deeper into the UA building until they reached a large metal door that only made Izuku gulp in a mixture of fear and nervousness. Sorry kid you're gonna have to ask them that. Present Mike boomed out opening the door for Izuku so he was faced with a dimly lit room with a bunch of Izuku assumed to be heroes sitting on chairs all looking directly at Izuku. Not even being in the room for less than a second and Izuku could feel the tension in the atmosphere and stood in front of the heroes patiently before the smallest one spoke. Examine 2238, Izuku Midoriya, age 15, born and raised here in Tokyo. You're a completely normal teenager. But then we had a look at what your quirk is. The small joyful voice spoke which Izuku's eyes widened at as he recognized the voice from when he watched UA Sports Festival a couple months back. It was the school's principal, Nedzu. You've been registered as having no quirk for since kindergarten. But this doesn't look like the movements of someone with no quirk just as Nedzu said that the screens behind him started playing videos of Izuku's performance in the practical exam. Crap. I didn't realize how fast I was going. I knew I would be a little fast but not that fast. And of course I would get noticed if I used my webs. I'm such an idiot. Currently hating his naive self for not stopping himself from using his spider powers, Izuku just looked down at the floor for a couple of seconds as he clenched his fist slightly. When he finally looked back up though Izuku went cold when he saw that some of the screens were changing to times when his Spider-Man fights were recorded by news reporters and amateur recordings. It was as if the teachers were comparing the two side by side. As you can see, we noticed a distinct similarity between you and the vigilante known as Spider-Man. So, we only have one question for you. Izuku's blood ran cold as the words came out of Nedzu's mouth. Are you or are you not the vigilante, Spider-Man? Ideas, scenarios, panic, doubt, fear. All of these things started to rush through Izuku's head like lightning as he kept thinking that there had to be a way out of this mess. He knew only two answers were acceptable at that this point but he knew that he was an awful liar and the fact he's been silent for about 10 seconds meant he was already screwed. Finally sucking up the courage Izuku gulped then looked at the shadow covered Nedzu with determination saying what he knew he couldn't avoid saying. Yes, I am Spider-Man. Though his body was full of courage, Izuku's mind was filled to the brim with fear trying not to break the face he was forcing on. Every second that went by in silence Izuku's fear grew more and more to the point where sweat started to flow down his head ever so slightly. Well glad we got that out of the way, you can go now. At first the principal's words confused Izuku but as they slowly sunk in he realized that he now had the least possible chance of getting into UA at this point compared to everyone else who entered. He was a vigilante, why would a school for heroes accept him? Of course Izuku knew the risks of what he just did but at this point he also knew one thing, one very important thing he knew and was told by others most his life. It was all his fault. It was his fault that he showed his spider powers. He could have easily done better with just his natural speed, strength and stamina and not used his webs. It was his fault that he failed the exam, he took it too lightly, he should have taken it so much more seriously. It was his fault that he was going to disappoint All Might. That's when Izuku's mind broke. Already halfway home he just sidestepped into the closest alleyway and leaned against the brick wall holding his hands to his face just and just began crying as if everything he had worked for was pointless because of his own choices. His stupid choices, not anyone else's, his. As tears seeped from his eyes and his body slowly slid down the brick wall into a little ball, Izuku couldn't stop the overwhelmingly negative memories flooding into his head. His loneliness ever since he was a small child. The constant bullying for being quirkless from almost everyone who went to the same school as him. Bakugo's constant abuse reminding him that he would always be weak and pathetic. His own mother telling him sorry over and over again for not giving him a quirk. All Might telling him to dream realistically and that he wasn't cut out to be a hero. His own weakness. It was almost as if his brain was forcing back every positive emotion and memory in his life and was feeding him all of his negative memories. You should just kill yourself. As those five words kept echoing through as Izuku looked up with tear-stained eyes to see that Bakugo was standing in front of him with a very arrogant smirk. 
Kei Ketch and Izuku stammered out in shock attempting to wipe away his tears and regain his composure, both of which failed miserably. Didn't you hear me, you bastard? I said you should just fucking kill yourself. Bakugo shouted almost like a command making Izuku flinch. Normally Izuku would just cry more or accept the abuse from Bakugo but something felt different. Like something in the back of his head was urging him to retaliate like his very skin was crawling telling his instincts to do something, urging him to fight. Izuku slowly slid his body up the wall while his fists were clenched tightly to the point where his knuckles turned white. Did you even think about what you say to others? How it makes them feel and how insignificant they feel. His voice traced with little hints of anger that Bakugo could pick up on easily. When did you get the fucking balls to talk back to me, you quirkless bastard? Bakugo gritted out in anger as he raised his hand in an almost claw-like style before he started threatening Izuku by making very small explosions in the palms of his hands. As he was used to doing for years, Izuku flinched at the sight of Bakugo's intimidation technique but not even a second before another skin-crawling sensation went through his body making his eyes and expression hardened while his right hand's grip became even tighter all the while. He now properly stood up in front of Bakugo noticing that thanks to his quirk's little growth spurt he was now actually taller than Bakugo by a couple inches. What? Are you gonna hit me? Don't make me laugh you shitty bastard. You couldn't even graze me if you tried. Bakugo laughed loudly in Izuku's face making his urge to fight reach boiling point. Izuku didn't say anything but instead reeled his right arm back through a powerful punch that he put all of his body weight behind it so he knew it would have a powerful impact when it hit. Izuku's punch was only met through with one impact and that was the rough crumbling feeling of a broken brick wall. Izuku began panicking immediately as he thought the punch was too hard but when looked around not only did he see no trace of Bakugo but there was no trace of anyone being in the alleyway except for himself. What? I swear Kachin was here. That. That couldn't have been a hallucination could it? Izuku said to no one in particular before turning back to his currently stuck arm and pried it free with a slight struggle. As Izuku examined his arm for damage he was noticing the hints of black shooting through his veins as the cuts and scrapes on his knuckles began to heal up extraordinarily quickly. The flashes of black couldn't help but remind Izuku of the black orb he had saw in his dream the previous night. Does the symbiote have anything to do about this? I mean these bursts of anger only started happening after I saw that black orb. Izuku thought to himself as he looked at his knuckles heal themselves quickly as they only had slight bloody grazes on them from the impact on the brick. I'll go see Dr. Connors, maybe he'll know what is happening with me and the symbiote. Izuku said out loud to himself as he blankly stared at his arm before making his way up to the roof and began running from rooftop to rooftop not even caring if he got caught. He wasn't in the mood to care if he was honest with himself. With the soft usual thud he normally made, Izuku landed in Dr. Connor's lab and was met with the slightly energetic but welcoming voice. Ah Izuku, so good to see you again, you're just the person I wanted to see. Dr. Connors greeted with a large grin on his face. H hey, Dr. Connors. Surprised by the sudden burst excitement Izuku took a step back but regained composure a second later allowing Connors to notice the blank and almost depressed look on Izuku's face. So I take it the exam didn't go well. Connors asked losing some of the excitement in his expression. No, I was an idiot, and I'm pretty sure I'm having hallucinations because of all this stress. Izuku said in a quiet and defeated voice while looking down at the floor gritting his teeth slightly. Only a few seconds passed by before Izuku felt Connor's left and only arm on his shoulder and looked up to see Connor's expression as a soft and warm smile. I'll tell you this now, you are far from an idiot Izuku. Not to mention you have an extraordinary amount of talent for a hero trying to get Izuku out of his depressed state Connors attempted to let Izuku know that he wasn't doing anything wrong but at the same time trying not to spill the fact about rescue points as All Might had let that slip a couple of days ago. I'm still a failure. Izuku mumbled before being met with a sigh from Dr. Connors who had now taken his hand off of Izuku and walking towards part of his lab before pulling out a medium-sized metal suitcase and holding it in front of him before stating here. Raising a slight eyebrow at the gesture Izuku took the suitcase from Connors and hesitantly opened it to see the other spider suit he designed. No dot 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 and oh no no. I don't deserve this. Similar to the web shooters, I followed your designs as much as possible but made a couple technical adjustments of my own design Connors stated with a small proud smile while Izuku held up the mask of the green and black suit shaking slightly. Hey, you alright? Noticing that Izuku was shaking and now crying as he held the mask in his hands. I I don't deserve this. Why? Why is everyone being so nice to me? First all might. Then Momo-chan and Yura-chan. And now you. I don't deserve all this at all. I've let you all down. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry Izuku said his tears seeped out of his eyes trailing down his face before splattering on the mask. Dr. Connors could only watch as Izuku slowly broke down in front of him as he couldn't do anything to stop Izuku from crying as saying anything nice would make him an even worse state and it was out of the question to say anything negative as that would be even worse. Minute after minute went by with Izuku weeping out all of pent-up emotions each tear feeling like a small weight was being lifted slightly from his shoulders. It wasn't until 15 minutes passed that Izuku could clear up his tears and not look like a complete mess. Yes, sorry about that. Izuku apologized with a slight bow as it dawned on him that he was in fact still in Dr. Connor's lab. Connor sighed before helping Izuku back up to his feet before speaking. It's fine. 
Honestly, I'm not surprised you've broken down like this. You've done so much that stress was bound to build up and get to you. Connors confessed to Izuku as he pulled a seat from his lab desk and sat down on it facing Izuku. Izuku merely wiped his tears away and attempted to regain his composure before speaking again to the one-armed OSCORP scientist with a slight bow. Thank you, for the suit and, for understanding. His voice still a little raspy from the breakdown, Izuku looked up at Dr. Connors with a determined look as he asked him if he could test the suit in the combat room which was received with a smile. And a yes. Normally Izuku would be over the moon from something like this but right now he was more concerned of letting out his pent-up stress on the combat drones than having another breakdown. With the new suit in his left hand and the mask in his right, Izuku made his way into the combat room almost relieved that he could do this. After slipping into his new suit and strapping the utility belt to his waist, Izuku noticed that the suit was a lot looser than he expected it to be. Press the center spider symbol that's on the chest Connor said over the speakers as if he could read his mind. Doing what the one-armed doctor suggested Izuku pressed the spider icon making a little clink and beeping noise and almost instantly felt the whole thing tighten up after that noise. As expected of the material it was made of, the spandex suit was now skin-tight hugging close to Izuku's body, a lot closer than he would have liked. I knew spandex was tight B but this is more than I expected. Izuku thought to himself with embarrassment he looked down on himself somewhat insecure with how the suit really showed off his physique which he was still actually quite embarrassed and insecure about. Izuku ignored the suit's flashiness of his slim figure and began looking at the pattern that was on chest and back. The black marks on the suit went all over the chest making a spider-like symbol that really contrasted perfectly with the green suit. On the suit it also had a small little stripe on the boots which Izuku assumed made the bottom half of the suit less bland. The design looked somewhat futuristic but kept a somewhat simplistic feel to it. Finished taking in the looks of the suit Izuku slid the mask on over his face and looked towards Connors giving him a thumbs up. Seeing the thumbs up from Izuku, Dr. Connors led in the combat droids who immediately went after Izuku but failing as he was dodging and hitting them back with ease. Every swing the droids made got countered and then met with a strong hit to a pressure point that had Izuku's frustration behind it. The drones didn't even last 10 minutes before they started to break apart piece by piece. Oh my, he's certainly under a lot of stress if he was able to break apart the drones with that much time shocked at the raw speed and power he was showing against the combat drones. Dr. Connors looked at Izuku with complete intrigue as the final drone stood with its left arm gone and the right arm damaged. As the drone charged forward its arm began making sparks come out of the palm of its hand that made Izuku's eyes widen and his breath quicken. Adrenaline began shooting through his veins as his mind forced up images of Bakugo into his head making his teeth grit together and rage as his fist clenched tighter. For a brief moment Izuku lost himself as his mind went to black but when his mind cleared and he felt himself he was looking down at the combat drone which was trapped underneath him in pieces from how much damage he must have done. Finally, you stopped. You were wailing on that thing for a couple minutes. I'm glad to see you're all right now with what sounded like a complete sigh of relief Dr. Connors deactivated everything in the combat room so Izuku didn't have anything to set him off again. I am sorry, I don't know what came over me. Izuku apologized once more for the mess he made but had a small smile on his face as he finally felt relaxed. No stress, no worrying thoughts, no nothing. Izuku was finally free of his pent-up stress and when he took off the mask Dr. Connors could see that from the smile on his face and just sighed as he walked up to the combat room's door and opened it up for him saying that he was glad to see Izuku smiling again. While Izuku couldn't help but laugh nervously at that comment before hitting the spider symbol on his chest with the palm of his hand making the suit loose again allowing him to take it off. About to hand the spider suit back to Dr. Connors Izuku kept smiling but Connors didn't take the suit from his hands. Instead he just walked away and began going back to his research. Dr. Connors, questioning the OSCORP scientist's motives Izuku walked over to the side of the doctor. It's yours, you don't have to give it back Connors stated not even looking away from his work. But I, just take the suit Izuku Connors side out slightly but smiling at Izuku cluelessness of this whole situation. Oh okay, thanks Dr. Connors Izuku thanked as he shoved the suit in his bag before leaping up the large hole in the ceiling. That boy is clueless. Why would I give him a suit that would be pointless if he failed? Connors chuckled to himself as he kept the true factor of the exam to himself. One week went by after the day of the UA entrance exam and Izuku had fortunately forgotten all about what he did in the practical exam. Yeah right, that lasted a couple hours until he got roughly 20 text messages from Yuraka apologizing for costing Izuku points in the exam. Those messages, while making Izuku smile, made a small amount of his stress come back to him so the nightmares of the black orb kept haunting him and if he ever left his thoughts alone so they would wander he would go into a blank stare at anything he was facing or holding in his hands, which is what he was doing right now, staring blankly at a piece of fish from his dinner. Izuku, Izuku sweetie, are you feeling alright? And Ko asked with concern in her voice as she looked at her day's son. Huh, eh sorry, I'm fine mom don't worry. Clearly startled by the question Izuku gave a half-hearted smile as he quickly ate the rest of the food on his plate before sitting down on the couch staring blankly at the wall in front of him while he used a grip trainer for both of his hands. I've failed. I only just passed the written exam. 
and not much needs to be said on my practical performance. Izuku thought to himself as he looked at his phone seeing that All Might still hadn't contacted him over the entire week he was near enough depressed. The whole week was just a seesaw of emotions for Izuku as the nightmares and his thoughts would lead him down into a depressed state while Momo and Yuraka lifted his spirits through their text messages. While Izuku looked at his contacts he began thinking of what All Might now thought of him. Nothing for an entire week. He probably knows that I failed. How much I failed him. I don't even know what he saw in me to begin with. But I don't care, I did what I thought was right, I saved your chan That's all that matters Izuku's thoughts were cut off by the sound of loud approaching footsteps as his mother burst into the room holding what seemed to be an envelope while exclaiming Izuku. Izuku, it's here. The letter, it's really here. No reaction. Izuku knew he failed what was the point in getting excited if he had just screwed up his chances of getting into UA and becoming a hero. Setting aside the grip trainer Izuku, still with a completely blank expression, walked towards his mother thanking her before taking the letter from her hands and walked towards his room closing it behind him before sitting at his desk turning on the lamp and just stared at the letter that was between his hands. What's even the point? I know what it's going to say. With a sad sigh and his grip tightening on the sides of the letter. It's just going to say I've failed. Shouting in a fit of frustration mixed with sadness Izuku pulled on both sides of the letter ripping it in two as his face remained in a tearful but frustrated expression. A loud clinking noise echoed through Izuku's head as he slowly looked down to see a small metal device landed on his desk with a small light blinking on it. What the? Not even able to finish his sentence the device shot up a beam of light that became a projection of. All might. Izuku shouted in disbelief as he fell backwards off his chair as the projection kept playing while Izuku's face went from that of disbelief and shock to one of depression. Pour salt into the wound why don't you? This is a projection. The holographic All Might exclaimed as he looked directly at the camera before taking several steps back showing that he was on a set that looked almost like a game show. W wait what? I thought this was from UA. Questioning why he was seeing All Might on a recording device from UA. Now you're probably thinking why is All Might on this? The answer is simple. I am in town to teach the next generation of heroes at Ua High. That explanation alone made Izuku go wide-eyed as he now ignored the argument that went on between All Might and one of the cameramen telling him to get on with it. The holographic All Mights went down a little bit as he turned to the camera now looking directly at Izuku. Midoriya, even if you just barely pass the written portion of the exam, only getting 10 points in the practical, naturally results in failure. Those words, those very words that came from the mouth of his very idol shook Izuku hard, his stress hitting him back at full force as he lowered his head so his small curly fringe covered his eyes so he instinctively hid his eyes from the projection. I already knew it. I already knew. Izuku thought his tears threatened to reveal themselves and his grip on his leg tightened almost drawing blood. But that's not the end of the story. That loud statement caught Izuku's complete attention making him look up at the holographic All Might with tears down his face but a small glimmer of hope in his eyes. Now then, watch the screen. All Might exclaimed in a booming voice as he pulled the remote out of his jacket and pressed a button on it making the screen change to what seemed like security camera footage. Izuku watched as he saw a glimpse of himself walking into the room where he revealed that he was Spider-Man. Only seconds after the door closed he saw Yuraka walk up to present Mike. Yura-chan. Izuku questioned as he remained quiet and watched. She came to us almost straight after the exam All Might explained as the video kept playing. Um, excuse me, but that boy you were just with. The boy with the curly hair and freckles. His name should be the I mean Izuku Midoriya Yuraka said with a nervous expression as she made hand gesture that looked like she was trying to show curly hair. See can you give him some of my points? Yuraka said with a blush on her face and a hint of pleading in her voice. W what? Izuku questioned in complete shock as his face softened up but the tears that had seeped out earlier were now trying to force themselves out. At least give him enough to pass. Please, he saved my life. Yuraka begged with a loud shout as her blush grew a little. Completely lost for words Izuku could feel himself start to tremble as his mind started piecing everything together all the while All Might became the focus on the screen again and pointed at Izuku with a bigger than normal beaming smile. A hero course that rejects those who do the right thing is no hero course at all. See we didn't just focus on villain points. Rescue points were also a factor and you young Midoriya scored 67 rescue points. All Might boomed out at the loudest Izuku had heard him while he just looked up in shock as happy tears began to fall. I, I never thought dot 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 that I'd. Izuku tried to speak out but was cut off by All Might with his hands stretched out. You've made it young Midoriya. This will be your hero academia. Those words were the words that Izuku needed to hear for the past week, the words he thought would never be said to him since he did the exam. As the projection finished Izuku couldn't help but yell out at the top of his lungs in happiness. Why 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 His celebration was cut short though as Izuku heard his phone go off showing that All Might had just messaged him to meet at the beach. With his web filters, Izuku didn't even give it a second thought as he began running around getting his vigilante hoodie without realizing, as well as grabbing his web shooters and his vigilante web filter belt before coming out of his room seeing his mother with a smile as she heard his shout moments ago. Izuku simply smiled back confirming her suspicion before running out of the building as fast as he could before strapping on his web shooters and leaping into the air. 
and began swinging through the air without a single care in the world. All Might stood on the beach looking out towards the ocean waiting for Izuku to show but when he heard the sound of a soft web splatter and the dragging sound of shoes scraping across the sand he turned around seeing Izuku crying ridiculously. All Might, shouting in what sounded like a mixed sob Izuku ran up towards him but quickly covered his mouth as he realized All Might was in his deflated form. Don't worry kid, it's just us here All Might laughed as he raised his hand up with a smile saying congrats on passing kid. Thanks. I was pretty sure I failed it with a small nervous laugh Izuku gave All Might a high five before going into a small bow as if he was thanking All Might. Lift your head up kid, everything you did was all you, not me All Might said as Izuku raised his head up but looked confused. But I told them I was Spider-Man, wouldn't that have meant I couldn't have been accepted into UA? Izuku questioned as he thought he was disliked by most of the public. Normally yes, but Principal Nedzu must have taken a liking to you, he knows my predicament and contacted me afterwards saying that you were Spider-Man. I pretend to be surprised and he said to me, you must admit All Might, the boy is good. He's already got combat experience against criminals and he's made an impact on this city that can't be ignored, plus he seems like a caring young boy. Izuku couldn't help but be shocked at the fact that the very principal of UA High took a liking to him for all the work he's done as a vigilante. As he kept thinking about All Might and Nedzu, Izuku only just realized that he was told to bring his web filters and shooters and asked All Might why that was. Well the answer is simple kid. All Might began as he took a few steps away from Izuku making him raise an eyebrow before going into his buff form and saying a single sentence that put Izuku into a state of shock. Dot 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 we are going to fight. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku got Harim with Spider Quirk. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought provoking as we did. A big shout out to Zedruff13 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys on part 2.